Hello, folks. <laughs> or let's go, folks. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you've gone I don't back. Know. Yeah, we'll see. Well, this is obviously, uh, I don't know if it's obvious, but it's uh, recorded before the poll. I don't know if the poll's been out yet. <laughs> uh, but maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, so it's hard to comment on it yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm still just playing it down the middle right now until we get a decision. Uh, from the from the top, <laughs> top down. <laughs> Hello, folks, or let's go, folks. I think that's still being decided. Uh, obviously, I'm still not home. I think I'm in, uh, I think I'm in Las Vegas when this comes out or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, wanted to shout out to our new sponsor from the makers of Helix, the most comfortable mattress ever. Comes all form, easily customizable sofas, armchairs, love seats, and more. All form delivers directly to your home with fast free shipping. You can assemble all the furniture yourself in minutes. No tools needed. Right now, All Form is offering 20% off, off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. That's 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. Life's best moments happen around a roaring fire and a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove makes your outdoor moments even more fun. Because instead of having to constantly smell like campfire fumes, you can sit back and actually enjoy the fire. I want everyone to have a solo stove. So here's the best deal in town. Go to solostove.com and enter promo code Nate for $10 off. That's promo code Nate at solostove.com for $10 off your order. Dive into summer with Mack Weldon. They are reinventing men's basics with everything you need to have the best summer of your life. Mack Weldon swimwear, Vesper Polo, Maverick Tech Chino shorts, and radius shorts are all designed to keep you comfortable, cool, and active this summer. Feel good and ramp up your casual summer style with Mac Weldon. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Nate and enter promo code Nate. That's MacWeldon.com slash Nate, promo code Nate for 20% off your first order. Uh, welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate Bargatze, Aaron Weber, Brian Bates. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for uh, whatever, just the stuff, dude. For being you, you know? Thanks, man. Not you. <laughs> the, I wish you were a different you. If you had kept your Planet Fitness thing, you might be a different. You showed the Planet Fitness you lost weight without them. Yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. You're weaker than you've ever been, but. That's you, true. <laughs> probably, yeah. 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 Mentally I think on an offensive physically. line, you would just get shoved over. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I weighed a lot less when I played offensive line, but I was I was strong. Just, I was sturdy as a rock. Yeah. You know. My center of gravity's at my neck. That's what I like to say. Yeah. I'll <laughs> fall over so easy. Yeah. Now, but then then yeah. You would you would be able to I was okay. His yeah. wife wished you over once at Zanies. <laughs> she did. She yeah. did. Yeah. She was yeah. like 90 pounds. That was yeah. my first bet, Laura. Then yeah. she was like, Want me to walk you to your car tonight? And she's like, <laughs> you trashed me about it for a while. It's <laughs> funny. It's funny. Uh, all right, comments, uh, as always, YouTube, Instagram, Nate Land, Facebook, fan page. Uh, is that us, our fan page? Uh, uh, no, that's Twitter, a, a fan run. A fan runs that. that Facebook page. Twitter, the subreddit, uh, Nate Land subreddit, so if people are on. <laughs> uh, that's the younger. The subreddit's popping, dude. There's yeah. a lot going on on there. It's, I, mean, I think it's great uh, that it's there. I like it, that people are talking, and that's what people can discuss. People that don't know the Reddit world might be like, oh, I don't know. But mm -hmm. maybe that's good. They wouldn't be left alone. <laughs> maybe they like being down there and be like, just get away. Get away from us. We're down here minding our own business. <laughs> Casey Jones. So I heard Nate on your mom's house and thought he was hilarious. Went and checked out this podcast last Monday at work and I'm already on episode 30. Hoping to get caught up by next week's episode. Watching it all unfold is like a less intense Breaking Bad. <laughs> you guys are amazing, even bark. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Welcome, Casey. I love that. Yeah. You know, flying through them. We're very similar to your mom's house, I think. And Breaking Bad. Very similar. And Breaking vibes. Bad. Yeah, yeah, your mom's house. It's uh, it's just a cleaner version of that. Yeah. You know, that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, BJ Maxwell. Nate's reading cadence is like a theme park roller coaster. He speeds downhill by stringing <laughs> seven to eight words together. Then he hits the climb and chugs through five to six words until he hits the slope again. Well worth the wait in line. That is, that's almost good, Ray, to describe my reading. If I have to, before I read, I would tell people that. If I had to read in public. So just so you guys know, this will be like a roller coaster. It's going to go quick, 
and then it's going to slow down, <laughs> then it'll speed back up again. It's almost a perfect way to describe it. Mm. Sarah Mish. When my husband and I were dating long distance, he flew to visit me in Chicago. It happened to be during the Olympics. So my mom and I made a 15-foot sign that said, Welcome home, and put Olympic rings on it. We told everyone else waiting for the flight he had just won a silver in wrestling because no one knew the wrestlers. No one knows the wrestlers. When he walked off the plane, everyone started cheering. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty great. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. a fun prank. He just has to. Yeah. He has like, no idea why. Yeah. You just have to take it at that point, right? Yeah. And he goes, Where's your medal at? He goes, That's my, I checked it. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I didn't get it. Oh, so we can't see it? No, they don't. Nah, Baggage you know. claim right now. Yeah, I hope it's not stolen. <laughs> uh, Matt Gable. Listening to you guys talk about losing weight really got me motivated. Today was the only nearby restaurant was a uh, McDonald's. But I was determined. I pulled up to the drive through speaker and confidently asked for a Southwest chicken salad and a bottle of water. The lady taking my order responded with, Sir, we haven't sold salads in over a year. I decided at that moment that the diet was no longer for me in order to double quarter pounder with cheese and a McChicken for a side sandwich. There it is. Lesson learned. <laughs> side sandwich. The side sandwich is the move. <laughs> everybody knows. I don't know. Probably not everybody. I know what we're talking about, that side sandwich. <laughs> I'll take a number one, no onions, Diet Coke. Go and throw a little cheeseburger, no onions on the side. Uh I, I do a McChicken a lot on the side. Yeah. It's yeah. a popular side sandwich. You tell me it's a meal. I have a little different definition of what yeah. a meal is, you know? So it you is. Got, I just you need put a side it with the other meal. Yeah. You need a side sandwich. Side sandwich is you gotta get it. Yeah. I mean, that sounded to get ordering a bottle of water at uh McDonald's. <laughs> do they no longer serve salads or just his McDonald's? I don't know. I'll be honest. I that lady, haven't he, looked into that. He got the answer he wanted. <laughs> yeah. That was the he didn't that, that's, that's what he was hoping. Yeah. She might have said, Sir, we've uh been selling so many salads in this past year and he heard <laughs> we haven't sold salads over here. He was like, scratch that, I'll take that. He, he heard what he wanted to hear. That's how I oh man, that's a tough one. You, you know, you're like, there's no other restaurant. I don't know what to do. Hmm. Get yourself a side salad. Get yourself a side sandwich. I ordered a quarter pounder with cheese by accident. <laughs> How did that happen? Were you at a nice restaurant? Uh, no, no. I ordered because yeah, it was. I wanted number two, but no onions. It was two cheeseburgers, but th that's been switched. Oh, I thought you met your. You were trying to order something healthy, and you accidentally no, got no. it. No, like, <laughs> no, no. You just got the number. Wrong. I got the number wrong. Well, they changed the number two to the quarter pounder, and so I just. Well, it's in. It, I've ordered so many that I don't even know what I'm. I'm just blurting out uh -huh. my order, and then I get it. And I'm like, why is it? Why is it in one box? And then, and so I ate a quarter pounder. I don't ever get quarter pounders. A fun fact: <laughs> It'll be on the <laughs> Nate Land uh, game board. <laughs> Never get a quarter pounder. Does Nate eat quarter pounders? <laughs> he doesn't. Hmm. Move two spaces. Hmm. Jeff Harden. When my buddy Carl was in college, he played football and needed another credit. The coach got him in a golf class. Due to conflicts with practice, he told him he didn't have to go to class. After graduating, Carl was interviewing at an accounting firm, and the guy noticed on his transcript he took golf in college. He asked Carl what his handicap was. Carl was floored, and his mind was racing. He couldn't imagine how he could have known he had a handicap. He told him he had a club foot when he was born, but they corrected it when he was young. <laughs> the interview burst it out laughing, busted out laughing. Oh, that's uh, that's very funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just got to play it off as a yeah. joke at that point. You know, oh, just laugh okay. with him. All right. you know, just in that situation, he's like, "This is the this is the adult world. Mm -hmm. They want to know what what what's your handicap before we get going." <laughs> and he goes, "All right, of course, yeah, had a club foot." When I was born, but they fixed it. Mm. So it won't be a problem around the office. <laughs> yes. I don't think it'll be a big problem around the office. Is that I think I can still do my job. And they go, I don't know. But that club foot, I doubt it. <laughs> Jordan Gibbs. Hello, Nate. You mentioned in an earlier episode that you were writing a song. Is this something that you're still working on? Thank you, Nate Land team, for this podcast. I look forward to it every week. Uh, we did write the song. Uh, it's... Uh, the guy's got a new song out now. Walker Hayes is who I wrote it with. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a great song out uh, that Laura sent me. Yeah, I don't know. No way we'll be able to play it, right? No. No. I'll play a second of it. Yeah, you can play like up to 
I would say seven seconds of it. Fancy like? Play seven seconds of fancy like. But get in the get a the little course. bit. Yeah. Oh, and then boy, this uh, is tough. This is, it's a great song. Uh, oh jeez. Yeah. I mean th- they just shut down the whole not at the beginning. You're wasting. I thought this was an ad. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> All right, maybe twenty seven seconds. Uh yeah. Try that. Yeah. Nailed it, Aaron. Oh, there you there's your line. Yep, fancy like Apple. You Weeks. sure this isn't the song you wrote? It's a great song. <laughs> I know it is. Uh, no, it's Walker Hayes. Me and him, uh, the ones that wrote it. We still have it. I don't know. I, I'm going to ask him uh, where it's at now that he's uh, blowing up from this. He was already doing good, but now that it's it's going great, so I'm going to be like, "Hey, man, I see our song got pushed behind. <laughs> what happened? Was I not good enough for you, Walker?" Uh, Abigail Ray, uh, when I was eight, I was going to Mexico with my mom and dad and it was my first plane ride. We were getting in the car and Nate came to tell me bye and said, Hey, don't worry about the flight. Only worry if you get peanuts. If they give peanuts, it means you're going down. I assumed he was kidding when I got them since the plane was fine. About five minutes after we were given peanuts, the landing gear messed up and we had to have an emergency landing. There were fire trucks and an ambulance, and the wheels were on fire. We had to be evacuated from the plane. I kept yelling at my mom, they gave us peanuts. They gave us peanuts. So for people, that is my sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, She lived a different life than me. She went to Mexico with my parents. Uh, I, I have a whole new joke about all this, so I can't, I won't dive into too much. But, uh... Yeah, they. I mean, it's crazy. They had to do. They had to do the where they had to like let the oil, the, the gas go and like you know and they like you see on TV just bzz, and it yeah. and they uh, all that stuff. And how old was this? Yeah, how old were you? She was eight, so I was uh, seventeen. I guess I'm nine years older than her. Yeah, seventeen, eighteen. So they were doing this, you know, and I was kind of like you're you're like hanging out more, you know, with your you're not eight. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Pretty good though. The odds of that it really worked out for me. Yeah. Uh, for the joke of the peanuts, <laughs> it's a pretty good joke. They give you peanuts. It's not good. <laughs> Telling an eight-year-old that is too. Is, <laughs> I mean, Harper's. Well, she's about to be nine, but uh, that's uh, Wes Griffin, Nate, Aaron, and back nine. <laughs> <laughs> I have a comedy trick that it always annoys me and was curious if it annoys you too. I hate it when comedians first come to the stage and say something like, I know what you're thinking. I look like blah, blah, insert option one mixed with option two. Curious your opinions on that cheap trick. Uh, Aaron, you still open like this. So what? <laughs> what two people you do you say you look like? Do you feel the audience hate it? Yeah. I hate that too. Did you ever do one? No. I- I'm sure maybe you have some. You always have a form of that. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, everybody kind of does. I it's not a good. I, I don't no no. You don't like it, but I always understand it. And so the way I look at it is usually it's when you first start. You have a lot of jokes that are kind of. I mean, I had airplane jokes about the seat not going back when I first started because you don't know that that's mm-hmm. very hacky to do. So I had. I mean, I would do airplane jokes at an open mic, which is I'm mortified when I think about that because they had to be just judging me so hard to be like this dude's doing airline stuff. About the peanuts, but uh, not about the peanuts. That'd be that'd be <laughs> a good. I might tell that story actually. Yeah, the peanut story on. Yeah. Uh, I could try that on stage, maybe. Well, another thing is that it's sometimes <laughs> it's awkward to just get started. Yeah, like it's it's hard to just start the set. So using a stock kind of structure yeah, like that, I know what is, you're is easy. Well, sometimes it works. You know, like Ryan Hamilton says, he looks like Seinfeld and Chris Rock, right? Or I don't know. It's something like that, <laughs> and he's. Uh, it's like kind of dead on. He says he looks more like a comedy club logo yeah. th- than a comedian. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is kind of dead on. It's yeah. very funny. Yeah. So if it's done at a that kind of level, the guy would be like, "Oh wow, that's you'd be like, yeah, I get it." I, but I, but it needs to be great. Yeah. If you're going to do it, it needs to be great. Or you need to be pretty young in the comedy and you don't know what to, you don't know how to start a show, and then you learn how to do it. Then you learn to kind of stop doing that kind of stuff. Uh, so the answer is kind of, I do agree with you, Wes. Uh, 
when I took a comedy class, uh, the very first class, he had us each get up on stage where we didn't know each other at all and have people write down what we thought this person, what they did, where they're from, just so you get a idea of what people think you are yeah. or who you Pretty are. Good. Yeah. What, do, what do people say about you? I don't even remember. I, I count it or something. I yeah. Look worried. Yeah. Yeah. That girl that said that's that nailed it more than anybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ben Dukes. Nate, you mentioned in a previous episode that Netflix gave you positive feedback about the ratings after the Tennessee Kid was released. Have you heard any news since the release of The Greatest Average American? I'm a big fan of the podcast. Keep up the great work. Uh, yeah, they did tell us a little bit more. I, I, I'm not allowed to say, but it was great. It did great. Everybody's very happy. Everybody's uh, so thank you for everybody that every single person that watched it. Everybody that you told people to watch it. If you know anybody that hasn't watched it, keep go watching it. I uh, appreciate that. My success all comes from. You people listening to this and telling people. I'm a, very much a word of mouth comedian, so I owe it to all of you, all the, the folks and the fans of stand up. Uh, it's completely you guys. And it's so we're, yeah, as always, I'm very grateful of that and we'll never take advantage of it. Uh, but yeah, it, it did really good and they were very happy, and which was great to hear. And, uh, you know, Netflix does, like when they look at stuff, they look at stuff like very early from the beginning. Right when it starts, they kind of see what the numbers are. Then they do it like, I think a month later or something like that. And then it kind of lives up there. So I don't know if they, they don't like keep tracking, but I mean, they know everything, dude. They know every second someone's watched, every person, you know. Mm -hmm. So something you got to think too, like how many people are watching this stand up special alone? I don't think I'm, I think I'm a, I know when people come to shows, it's couples, it's families. Uh, I'm, people do watch it alone. I'm not saying they don't. Uh, I watch a lot of stuff. You know, you know, you, you like comedy. You watch something alone or whatever. But so you hope more. You know, then all those families will watch it together. But it was good. Uh, so thank you, Jennifer Landris. While visiting with some good friends in their home, a neighbor came to visit. The neighbor had the worst teeth I have ever seen. <laughs> so much so that it affected his speech. At one point, he went to the restroom, came out, and announced that he was out of. To and he was out of toilet paper at his house and had some had stuffed some extra TP in his shoe to take home with him. We were all trying so hard not to laugh and hurt his feelings. For almost half an hour, full of socially awkward interactions, we refused to make eye contact when, with one another or we would not be able to contain ourselves. We were working so hard to be kind and matters got worse when he attempted two magic tricks with a deck of cards bombing <laughs> terribly. Then the third trick was mind-blowing and super impressive. It turns out the neighbor was Nate's dad, Steven. <laughs> he had dentures professionally made to, to play this hillbilly role. He proceeded to perform the most amazing magic show for us and our friends in the living room. I was not at all surprised when I saw Nate on Jimmy Fallon several years later and recognized the last name. Thanks to your whole family for bringing joy and laughs to our family. Uh, yeah, that's great. That's, yeah, my dad would always, uh, he had... Him and uh, Wayne Denton, his buddy Wayne, they would do it together, but he would just be, he's very good at doing that, like sticking with that and like having it, you know, and we'd watch him, he'd, he'd do it, he'd go in a gas, he just would put these crazy teeth in and- uh, you'd Just go into a gas station? He'd go in a gas station, he'd order something <laughs> and you would be like, you just go in there and sit and it just looks like, you know, you know, there's something wrong with this guy and you watch him just have to be nice to him. You know, and he just gets them to do it, and he goes and buys <laughs> gum or something. <laughs> I asked your dad about this, and he remembers this particular yeah. episode. There was more to it that they put in there. Like, he wore, like, a blue Walmart vest yeah. and all kinds of stuff. He has, like, a, a windbreaker jacket. It looks like a jacket you'd wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not far off from your outfit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. I can see it. It's always, like, uh, yeah, it's something that... You know, you got the you got the flip flops, Walmart flip flops. He'd love those; they would fit in great. I'll get him a pair. <laughs> uh, you nailed that reading, by the way. Yeah, it was a that lot. Was. I mean, so I, I look at sentences. Sentences, those sentences. You're like, I hope this was the next sentence. That's <laughs> the whole the whole all of them. You were flying through them. You nailed it. Yeah, we're getting better. You know, practice. You guys are going to watch me learn and get better. I want to go find out if I have dyslexia. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You know. If you do, you've 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 conquered it, man. 
Uh, just one week. One week. <laughs> no, was good. I'm demeaning your whole I mean, life. We're, we're coming off quickly. You I'm talk. Just cut Larry. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and to go, I'm, I don't know how much I'm conquering. I mean, yeah, I'm, I've, I've made a living. Yeah, yeah a that's career. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't think, I think a lot of people have. I don't think dyslexia, like. I'm trying to put a good spin on this, I mean, dude. yeah. But people with dyslexia, there's like, most of us don't make it out of a closet. We're just in there, just like, ah, it's our Uncle Randy. He's got dyslexia and he can't, he's been in that closet for 10 years, doesn't know how to get out. We've slapped food under the door. He lives there now. He thinks that's the world. He goes, this is a big world. <laughs> Aaron says you could be their spokesperson. You're the role model. Yeah, for dyslexia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, who's another celebrity that has dyslexia? Joe know. Biden? Doesn't Biden have it? I don't know. Uh, that would, that would be terrible. He's a he yeah. Doesn't, he's a I president. I don't know if it's a celebrity. <laughs> uh, they go Shaq. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Y'all mean? I think you're about to say Kardashian, Jake. I'm a president of the United States of America. <laughs> who's another one? That, oh, Kim Jong Un. That's a celebrity <laughs> that has. Uh, you just start naming just. Yeah. Putin. Yeah. Who's that famous guy in Russia? Ah, oh, Putin. Uh, celebrities with Dyslexia. So sorry for saying Biden. He does, I mean, he does not have it. I don't know why I thought. Nate Tim Tebow. Lose cover by reading that. Yeah. Yeah. Steven Spielberg. They all did real good. Yeah. yeah. Justin Timberlake has AD. Oh, Henry Winkler. <laughs> dyslexia and math issues. <laughs> I mean, that feels like just someone doesn't guy. like him. <laughs> There's no reason to put that in there. Dyslexia and doesn't smell good. You're like, oh, all right, dude. Just the question was who has dyslexia? It wasn't going. The rest of them are conditions. His is just math issues. <laughs> math, yeah. <laughs> Five plus five, nine. <laughs> Henry, come on, buddy. Come on, Fox. Hey. Hey. He goes, oh, God. He doesn't, he doesn't get it. What is wrong? If you've been listen, listening to this show for a while, you've probably heard me talk about our Helix mattress. We love it. We still love it. Everybody that slept on it loves it. Well, Helix has left the bedroom and started making sofas and more. They just launched a new company called All Form, and they're already making the best sofas we have ever seen. All form is the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials and at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. You can pick a fabric, uh, sp it spill, stain, scratch resistance, the color, the color of the legs, sofa size, shape to make sure it's perfect for you at your home. Same for love seats and chairs. All form sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping. Sofas can take weeks or months to arrive and you need someone to put it together. All form takes just, I mean, three to seven days, which is insane, as you know, for anything you try to order now. And you can assemble it yourself, no tools needed. Laura's put ours together easily for our office. We chose the armchair with the sand fabric with the natural wood legs. It's uh, super comfortable. I sit in it all the time as she uh, lectures me about everything. Uh, that's where I get told what to do. If getting a sofa without trying it in store sounds a little risky, don't worry. You get 100 days to decide if you want to keep it. That's more than three months. If you don't love it, they will pick it up for free and give you a full refund. But I promise you're going to love it. They even offer a forever warranty, literally forever. To find your perfect sofa or chair, check out allform.com slash Nate. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. A-L-L-F-O-R-M dot com slash Nate for your new favorite sofa. 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. During the summer, we spend a lot of summer nights outside with our neighbors, s'mores, and just hanging out. The solo stove is the perfect addition. My neighbor, Felix, he loved his, and he got one himself. He loved it when we came over. It's awesome. You don't smell like smoke. That's the biggest thing that you don't have to go, like, when you just go out in the, uh, you just want to go out, like, quickly one night, and then you got to go take a shower at 11 o'clock at night because you just reek of smoke. The solo stove has been so much better than any fire pit I've been around ever. I'm not sure how it works, but I mean, not smell like campfire. That's the main thing. That's the thing that I love the most. And that's the reason I have it. That's such a big deal. The fire looks awesome. We have the bonfire version with, uh, with the stand. It is small enough to take to the front or the back, or if we go to the lake, we can easily take it there. It burns down to a white ash. So cleanup is super easy. Solo stove creates great times without the fireside fumes. Stainless steel, 
uh, construction designed to regulate airflow and burn more efficiently. So little smoke, you will wonder how there is so much fire. And the fire looks awesome too. It's like very bright, uh, you know, the yellow, red, blue, like it looks crazy. Solo stove fire pits are portable and built to last. They are so confident you will love it. They offer a lifetime warranty and 30 day free return policy. No one needs a reason to gather around the fire. Solo stove just took away any reason not to. And now you can get $10 off when you use promo code NATE at checkout. Just go to solostove.com. And remember, you get $10 off when you use promo code NATE. That's promo code NATE at solostove.com for $10 off your order. Kick your summer off in style with a brand that's reinventing men's basics, Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is so much more than just underwear, even though I have that and their underwear is awesome. Their full collection includes t-shirts, polos, buttons up, button ups, shorts, swims, and so much more with light and breathable fabric technology. Mac Weldon keeps you cool and comfortable all summer. From work to working out, happy hour to playing with your kids, Mac Weldon has men's essentials for whatever your day includes. Trust me, your closet is going to thank you, whether it's the hoodies, polos, tees, or active shorts. Everything in the Mack Weldon collection mixes and matches seamlessly to fit with any other trendy products you have. Everything will go together. You don't have to ask your wife, does this match? Does this look okay? Dive into Mack Weldon's swim line with trunk and board short options that are quick to dry and have four-way fa four stretch fabric. I'm about to get some of their swim uh, trunks because I need some. I'm going to have one pair forever, and I'm going to try to mix it up and at least, have, at least bring two pair. Out, so I'm gonna order some. I can't wait to get them. Mack Weldon wants you to be so comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, and I do, and you will, you can keep them, and they're still refungy. No questions asked. That's pretty crazy. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Nate and enter promo code Nate. That is MacWeldon.com slash Nate, promo code Nate for 20% off Mack Weldon, reinventing men's bases. What's the Speaking of uh, Henry Winkler, yeah, '80s. Yep, that's the topic today. Wow, Henry was uh, oh, that worked out. Yeah, that worked out. Was that show in the '80s? Happy Days. Probably. Start of the '70s. Jump the Shark in the '80s. Oh, there you go. Oh, but he was famous in the '80s. Yeah, and '90s. And he's keep still, going. Yeah, he's, he's still done very good. Yeah, and he's, he's got dyslexia and math issues. We just watched the the Water Boy. <laughs> oh, all right. He's oh, yeah. coach in that. I forgot he was the coach in that. Yeah. So a lot of fun stuff in the 80s. I bet so. The AIDS epidemic swept the country. <laughs> yeah. No, I learned my lesson. Not so much gl gloom and doom. Do you, uh, I remember basically everything about the 80s. You weren't born. What, anything in particular you want to start with that you remember from the 80s? So, born in 79. I remember, I guess, 89. I was 10. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I remember. There's nothing that. I mean, I'm sure when you bring up stuff, I'm, I'll, I'll probably remember stuff. There's nothing that was like, I don't, you know, when do you become like super, you're like, oh yeah, I remember everything. I'm not a good member, remembering person. I have remembering issues. You don't have a good memory? Uh, Dyslexia and remembering issues. <laughs> yeah. What if I, Henry this doctor comes in, he goes, you have dyslexia. I've told you this before. I'm like, God, I forgot. <laughs> And then they had to put that in remembering issues. He has <laughs> dyslexia and remembering issues. Uh, uh, and some math stuff. Yeah. And some, then again, just they, some math yeah. stuff. <laughs> just some other things. Mm. It just gets very broad. <laughs> and uh, some English nonsense. But I don't know. We can go et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> He doesn't know what that means, et cetera, et cetera. You think he's going to keep going? He, goes, he doesn't know what et cetera means. You're like, oh, oh, so it ends? You, yeah, yeah, it's not et cetera. It means he doesn't know what that means. <laughs> well, I'll start with some inventions that kind of became big in the 80s. It started the 80s with cameras. It was still the Kodak, the Polaroid yeah. pop out. By the end, disposable cameras was the way to go. So I remember that. But that would have been the 90s, too. Yeah, but they kind of took off in the 80s. Yeah, but I, yeah, so those were big. Do you remember those disposable cameras? I do remember disposable cameras. And they still, you still see them occasionally at like, uh, you've been to like a wedding where they have them sitting at the table yeah. and stuff. Because they're like a dime now. Yeah. Like they're, they're, yeah. They're barely hanging on. But that used to be your camera was just a disposable camera. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, you take them to Walmart or Walgreens yeah. or something. <laughs> take pick. Oh, <laughs> I think mean, you take them there to take pictures. Well, well, let me do that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Walmart open. There you go. Right. Yeah. The picture of Brian. In front of it. 
Yeah. <laughs> you take him down to the Walmart, take pictures. There's a picture of Bald Eagle just <laughs> sitting there flapping his wings in front of the new Walmart. And they had to back up so far just to get all of it in. Yeah. I remember when it came. The Walmart came? Yeah, it was, blew up, blew Kmart out of the water. And did y'all went? Oh, yeah. 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 It's like going to, when you get a big store like that, I do remember that. It's like going to, uh, you're excited to go. You're like, oh, oh you know yeah. they got a new. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember I was, um, I mean, for shopping, I had a couple of wardrobe malfunctions in high school. For shopping, goodies was the go-to store in yeah. Lebanon. Yeah. We're just going <laughs> to blow past your wardrobe malfunctions? Well, I'm going to sell it, but okay. I'm, I'm just okay. setting you up. Okay. Do you know what goodies is? No. Does goodies still exist? Uh, is it a candy bar? It was a. It is a candy, but I kind of know the store. To us, it was high end fashion in, in Lebanon. It was <laughs> yeah. like the only store. So one Christmas, my mom and I went to Hickory Hollow Mall. Um, yeah, big trip. Big trip. It is a big. That's trip. a big trip. And there that's was that's like forty minutes. Forty minute yeah, drive. Yeah, yeah. Especially where we lived. Yeah. And these Coca Cola shirts were a big thing for a while in the eighties. Do you, do yeah. you ever heard of this? And there was this shirt in the store it said Coca Cola Casual Wear. 1987. This is Christmas 86. And it was bright and it was stood out. And I thought, this is the coolest thing ever. So I asked my mom if I could have it. It was like $30. So she said, that's too expensive. But she knew how much I liked it. So uh, put in Coca Cola Casual Wear 1987. Okay. And, but then she surprised me for Christmas with it. So now I've got this shirt and that, that one right, the bright one, second row, second row. Oh, right here? Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, it. The first one there on the left. Oh, that is a cool shirt. Yeah, but you'd be wearing it in <laughs> so, the way you're supposed to wear it now. He wore it as Yeah. It was Well, I wore it so I'm you, so excited. You should buy that shirt now versus oh sorry. And I wore it to high school first day after Christmas. And because everybody in Lebanon, again, you'd wear the same shirts because everybody shopped at Goody. Yeah. So everybody had the same <laughs> new shirt. Yeah. 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 So I thought I'm gonna be so cool. And I was a sophomore, there was a senior girl. Who had the same shirt, <laughs> and she was furious <laughs> that this nerdy guy. She was really popular in high school, yeah. And I'm walking down the hall, and, she, and she's furious. So it's embarrassing for both of us to wear because that shirt so stands out. Well, about two weeks later, it comes back up in the rotation, yeah. and I wear it to school, and here she comes walking down the hall, and she's wearing her, and I could just hear her say to her friend, "Are you kidding me right now?" <laughs> she was so mad and so embarrassed. And I never wore it again. Like, yeah. I was just like, I can't do it. I can't take the chance. Yeah. Maybe after she graduated high school, but by then it was 88. And yeah. The shirt was old. Now you look dumb. <laughs> so that was one. And then the other one, somehow I missed out that boy bands weren't cool if you're a guy. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> new edition, yeah. they were a big thing, but that's the only boy. And then my senior, before my senior year of high school, right before we started back, me and my buddy went to the New Kids on the Block concert. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize that. That's not cool for guys. Yeah. So I bought a T-shirt at Starwood Amphitheater to wear to school my first day of my senior year. And a big statement. Well, people quickly gate. let me know. It kind of yeah, I brought it for a official. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wore this shirt to school the first day of my senior year, yeah. and uh, it it didn't go over well. Guys quickly let me know this. Uh, I mean, it, that's yeah. not cool. It's like an improv troupe. Yeah, <laughs> you know? there you would be. What did you you just tell them they do a concert? You're like, no, I stole it from some girl. <laughs> <laughs> that would be what you should. You would be like, all right, that's cool. I beat up a girl and beat took up her a girl. shirt. I mean, I was so proud. It took like third period of people just like, what are you doing, man? Before I realized mm -hmm. this was a huge mistake. And you had to wear it all day, all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I couldn't go home. Yeah. Could so, you turn it on its head and be like, yeah, it's yeah, it's hilarious that I'm wearing it. I could have if I was yeah. smart, but no. Yeah. yeah. It took if me half the a, day to realize if it's not a time cool. machine, we could go back and <laughs> fix it but you're kind of past the point of Don't you think you could have uh done it? Yeah, I could have done a lot of stuff. Could have There's a lot of stuff I could have done differently. <laughs> a little bit more. I went up to a guy in high school and asked for his autograph. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Who? Who was it? <laughs> that was <laughs> God. <laughs> you didn't go to my high school. 
Were you in high school? I was like a freshman in high school, and I was the biggest sports fan in the world. And I read like every Street and Smith mag- college basketball magazine from cover to cover. And they listed the top high school players coming out. And a guy named Carlos Groves played at East Robertson High School. And he got recruited by Tennessee. And he was in my magazine. And I was so excited that he came to our high school to play. He was like a celebrity that I went up to him and had him autograph my magazine. Yeah. And his buddies were like teasing him. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. what? Yeah. It would almost be like if somebody came up to me now. Like it was just ridiculous every way around. Like he was embarrassed. Yeah. I'm the only one not embarrassed at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else is like, what is going on here? And they just teased him about it. Yeah. But he he played at Tennessee. His biggest claim is the hack a shack when Shaq couldn't hit a free throw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They would put him in the game and like they got in a fight because I he, remember like, that. Fouled him pretty hard. Pulled a him big down. fight. Yeah. Yeah, they're the giant, like one of the more famous college basketball fights, right? LSU and Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was him, Carlos Groves. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a huge fight. I remember that game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was very funny. So yeah. I don't know if you guys are getting a trend here. I wasn't that cool in high school. No, I think we got it. <laughs> uh, there's. That's you're like trying to make a case for it in court. You're like, they would, the judge goes, all right, dude, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Tells us Costanza. Yeah. He goes, we don't need anything else. There's Andrea Dorian. Andrea Dorian. Is this him right here, Brian? I, I mean, maybe now, but you couldn't find a picture of him in college. I wonder if he would remember you. <laughs> I, I bet he would. I mean, there's a good chance. Yeah. That was the fight. Yeah. It was there's a Shaq huge right fight, there. dude. I mean, it's a huge, huge fight Good. when they. Uh, I mean, he was so big, and look at him there next to Shaq. I know. Yeah, yeah, they got in such a such a big fight about it. I remember that. Uh, I remember I saw Shaq play. That was like one where you feel old. Where we talk about like that, where you see guys like I saw Shaq play in college. Mm-hmm. And you then, saw his whole career. Uh, basically, I mean, I, he's about yeah. as early as I start remembering. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he knows. Oh, I can remember before there was a three-point line. Yeah. <laughs> I really can. Yeah. It was a big deal for Vandy because we always had great outside yeah. shooters. So, yeah. yeah, you know. Was, oh, yeah, I totally remember that. Are you still disappointed about it? <laughs> about the three-point yeah. line? Did you ever come to accept it? Were you yeah. mad about it at first? It's against the spirit you were of the excited game. No, it. I liked it. I liked it. The Vandy streak got broken on my wedding day. And yeah. we were at my res- wedding reception, and Keith Alberstadt texted me furious about it yeah and like for a second i was just so mad at my wedding reception but then i moved on yeah Mm -hmm. yeah we had we had vandy as an active streak or they did where we've hit a three-point every game since the three-point line has been put in can you name the other teams that were on that streak ucla no we don't have to go too much i'll give you two more guesses (laughs) one's kind of obvious and the other is not duke no north carolina uh princeton Okay. And UNLV. Hmm. Which I always say UNLV, and everybody always acts like they're like, oh, obviously. Like, and you're like, there's no way no. There's a, that, that's obvious. UNLV's the shock to me. But I guess they used to hit they threes, good, but they had Larry program. Johnson. Like, yeah. I, that's who I think of UNLV. Like, it's more of, it's not a, like they're going to hit three right. points mm-hmm. for the for that. But now it's just UNLV and Princeton because Vandy, Jerry Stackhouse broke the streak, which was, was tough. It was, it was tough because they would go, the streak continues. They would say that every game. And it's like it was just like wow. something great we had, yeah. and then he Stackhouse is there, and he came in and broke it, and it's it was I was pretty upset about it too. Yeah. Like it's like just come on, dude. It was almost like he did. It just shows it, nothing against Jerry Stackhouse, but it made me mad with being like, do you even know? Like uh, like we have this thing going, we like it. Yeah, I know it doesn't matter, but it's not like we won a championship and he broke and we lost the strike. We did terrible. And then the streak got broke. So he kind of added yeah. on. But then I, when he kind of like blew it off, like, who cares? You're like, it doesn't matter to you because you just got here. You're not going to stay here probably forever. Yeah. But we are. So don't mess it up. Uh, pretty upset about that. Uh, yeah. So it went from like, that streak went from like 87 or something to 2000. Last year? 19. Yeah, it's the start of 2020. Yeah. The three-point line got put in in 87? It was the mid-80s. Mm-hmm. Wow. For I didn't college. know it was that. Okay. They had it in the NBA before yeah. that for a while. Not, not for a while. I had no point? idea it was that recent. I feel like the NBA maybe got in the late seventies, and then college was like the mid eighties. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, cell phones started coming on the scene, like the big box ones. I we guess. had one. Uh, I remember my dad had a, a one in a bag. Uh huh. But I mean, we never could use it. Like it was. I mean, I think it was a few dollars a minute. Yeah. Like they, it was, it was almost, I don't, you know, it was like, well, in case there's an emergency. Yeah. That's when they all started the emergency kind of thing. When you think about that, they all, mm-hmm. it all started with, well, what if there's an emergency? Mm-hmm. And like, so everything kind of gets sold on the fact of if there's an emergency. It's kind of crazy. Like you look at insurance, insurance is all for an emergency. And then you get down to now cell phones. Well, you need this bag. And so we mm-hmm. sell you this cell phone. And well, what, what if an emergency happens? Then it's like, so you save it up for just this emergency. Mm-hmm. My parents gave me my first cell phone, and they said, "Just keep it in your glove box in case you ever break." Like I didn't even turn it on; I just put it in my glove box, and it was an emergency. If I broke down, I could. What happens if it died? It would have. It would have just been dead. I guess. I mean, I guess if you never turn it on, it's going to stay charged for. I don't think a long so. Time. I don't think that's how think electricity it would, it would drain eventually, but eventually you would, you'd be able to hold it for a while. I, I don't know, but bottom line is, I just didn't even turn it on. I would just put it in there, and if I had to reach somebody, and then I turn it right back off and put it in my glove box. That's so crazy! If yeah. I leave the room without my phone, I turn around and go find it. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm so tired of a phone. I yeah. go. I took it the other day. Yesterday, I went. I just had my watch on, and then I left my phone here and went down to my neighbor's, and just sat there. I want to leave it. I, I don't want it at all. It's there's just too many. Uh, it's just so much. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of texts. Uh, personal computers or came out in mid eighties, um, and the Apple Mac, the first Mac came out in eighty four, which yeah. kind of revolutionized. Computers. You gasped <laughs> in your mom's womb. In your mom, you go, <laughs> yeah, you felt it. Could you feel I was, it? I was in utero for seven years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> took a while yeah. to come out. <laughs> I took my time. Dude. When were you born? Ninety one. Ninety one. God. Uh, CDs passed cassette tapes and sales in 1988. Oh, I thought that would have been later. 88 CDs. Yeah, I remember cassettes, but our uh, CDs were more expensive. Yeah, I mean that's where people just thought they were not gonna like. If you're a band and you were like selling CD, I mean you could just never imagine music could have been where it's at now. I mean Mm -hmm. I'm sure the ones that did have been paid very well because yeah. they predicted it but i mean there's gotta be so many people that are like yeah dude i you're just selling cds and uh you know cassettes and you're it's it's uh the radio's huge everything's huge mm-hmm. everything is so big back then radio's so big tv's so big all this stuff is so big it was so powerful it's interesting that some of these things have come back in style a little bit like vinyl's been popular for a while now but mm-hmm. you know cassettes are back you go to some of these these hip uh record stores music places yeah there's are cassettes like new artists new artists will put their albums out on cassettes now where could you even listen to it at i don't know i don't have one in my car you have a cassette well you have to just buy a cassette player yeah yeah the cars even have cd players anymore they i don't know mine's t- 10 years old but yeah the new ones might mine not no. no yeah I forgot to mention the first cell phone cost four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope you locked your glove box. It took well that one, I didn't have this. <laughs> that one. cost more than a car. <laughs> yeah, the phone could only store thirty numbers. It took ten hours to charge, and it offered thirty minutes of talk time. Four thousand dollars. I mean, imagine someone using that. They were how much was it to talk? I don't know. Yeah, you didn't take to look at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't. Yeah. Uh if it like if someone used their phone act like a lot back then, I mean god, that's got to be such a rich person. Yeah. That just could you spend 4 grand on it's just a statement. I get, you know, if someone needed it. Yeah. Yeah, um 3:30 oh, never mind. Thought I had the number. Totally misread the sentence. False alarm. Three thirty. Yeah, that's three thirty-five per hour. There's no way that's right. Who's on the phone for an hour? Uh, but that's probably broken up in whatever you know. So basically, yeah. it's three thirty-five an hour. So if you if you talked for you know ten hours, it'd be thirty bucks. Thirty bucks a day. 
Okay, I think I might have dyslexia because that that's uh, three thirty five an hour was minimum wage in nineteen eighty four. That's what I read. I think I got paid less than that in nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> what was the minimum wage in ninety seven? I think I, I thought I got paid three twenty five an hour when I had my first job <laughs> at uh, Opryland Theme Park. You could file the lawsuit. Yeah, get some back pay. What was he? Who they got think for that? Isn't the minimum wage now? Well, who do you got think? <laughs> uh, how much was the minimum wage in Nashville in nineteen ninety seven? Or no, it wasn't mid-97, maybe it was 94, something like that. Uh, 95, maybe. Yeah, the uh, the 425. So maybe that was it. So maybe it was 425, not 325. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, Sony Walkman came out in the 80s. They were hoping to sell 5,000 units in the first month. They sold 30,000. So it was a big hit. Do, what, do you remember when that hit? Were you, were you in middle school, high school? I or? think I was in middle school. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly. Okay. I, I remember one. mowing the grass and listening to Walkman. And so Walkman, you couldn't have the CD player for a while, but then the Walkman, then they, then they're like, you go to the CD player and you were like, it's got to, you got to carry around. You know, the Walkman was like, it was at least size of a tape. You clip it on your belt. Yeah. It didn't skip. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you get a CD player and a Walkman. And you, I'd, I remember mowing the grass with it. You'd have those little headphones in mm -hmm. that just let, all the noise. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. now it's all about the experience, and it cover, these are covering your ears, and Ooh, yeah. and I mean, it was basically just like having it off, <laughs> you know. And you're you just hear everything, uh, and then you get the CD player and skip, and then they had that no skip button. Gary Goldman has a joke about that. It's very funny uh, about not having some skip, like anti skip button, so it doesn't uh -huh. skip, but it skip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now you can listen. You can wear a watch and have Bluetooth headphones in. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. It's it's sometimes it's like I feel like we kind of forget. You just get you you slowly build into this stuff, mm -hmm. so you just really get used to it. But uh, you know the fact that you can see each other on your FaceTime. I mean, it's just it wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. No, you couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, almost a fourth of mattresses sold in the '80s were water beds. Do you ever have a, I had water, a water bed? bed. You did, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of fun. I remember my uncle had one uh, when he because he was younger than my parents, so he was still living at my grandparents or his parents' house when we were born, and so we'd always because his room was like cool, like because he was 19 or something, mm -hmm. and he had a water bed, and uh, and then I remember we, uh, I had one. I remember I bought one. And then people would tell you to put sand in it. They'd be like, Instead should... of water? Yeah. Really? I think so. I, I never could... had a water bed. Uh, they sleep good? pretty heavy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean. I... I mean, it's water, it's pretty heavy. That could be made up. <laughs> but I, I, I'm pretty sure some people would say put sand in it. And then, yeah, that'd be very heavy. <laughs> but a water bed was heavy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah it, either way, it's super yeah. heavy. Yeah, it's did... funny. Why would you sleep on a waterbed? Is there they, they 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 must have gone way down in popularity now? I don't think they. You think because people got people got fatter? <laughs> the waves <laughs> just blew, started crashing. Well, we just started. <laughs> you gotta have a low wake zone when you go to bed. <laughs> you just toss your wife right out of bed. Dash, she just hits the. She just goes flying in the air. Just hits face first into the <laughs> the the closet. This fold out closet thing. Goodbye. You gotta leave them shut. She's care. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the uh, Murphy bed, thing? Yeah. Murphy bed, water bed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know, yeah. Of, uh, like apartment complexes or condos. I think you either they're not allowed, or you have to let them know because if they break, it's going to drain down every floor. Right. Yeah, but I don't. Oh, I think they they had problems with that. Yeah, I don't think they sell them anymore. I'm sure they do. I'd, I'd like to get one. I'm gonna look that up. Uh. This one's for you, Aaron. Yeah. 1984, the first minivan. Well, on the nice. Scene. The Dodge Caravan and the Plymouth Voyager. What's yours? I have a Chrysler Town & Country. Oh, okay. I think just regular vans were big back up and, you know, just the uh -huh. kind you slide open, like throw some kids in there and yeah. take off. I don't know if I remember in my lifetime a new type of car coming out. Like a minivan, that's a whole different thing, right? Tesla? Yeah. Well, Tesla. But that's electric car. <laughs> you know what I mean? The shape, the shape yeah. of it. I would say some trucks. They got that extended cab. 
like where you got seats in the back. I mean, a, a mm-hmm. truck now is like a full on four door car. Yeah. Know? Yep. And so having that extra, I mean, you sit back there, there's a ton of room. Yeah, but if you see that truck go by, you're not like, what is that thing? Yeah. I imagine first time you see a minivan, you're like, that's a whole different different thing. I think you've seen vans, though. They were at 12-passenger vans and stuff like that. No, oh, they had vans? No. It was just like one that your family could afford. Okay, so they had the yeah. big 15-passenger. I think so. Yeah. They probably had shuttles. Airport and, shuttle yeah, car. Yeah, stuff like that. Right. So I don't, there goes my point. Yeah, I don't think you were like, what is... <laughs> Like a helicopter landing in the, in the middle of the cul-de-sac. You go, what? All these kids keep coming. They keep coming out of it. How many people they got in there? You gasp. <laughs> Do they still sell regular just vans now? I, yeah, yeah, I think so for sure. Like a twelve-passenger yeah. van. Uh, uh, I guess just like like scooby doo type van just right the, yeah they got some, for sure oh I, yeah i think that was becoming popular yeah that van life is popular yeah, people, now. oh really now they're making vans that you can like there's companies that you you can, you can live out of it it's a bed it's mm-hmm. a whatever you know yeah i think you can get anything you want now and i think a lot of stuff comes back and you can get whatever you whatever you want i bet water beds are back i bet everything's back i bet you can get whatever you want now because people want to people buy there's now it's all about niche so it's all niche markets and there's enough niche people that want to Live in an old van. <laughs> it's not the kind of people vans are rocking. Don't come and knocking. I was thinking about the eighteen, which is probably for your time, but they had a van. Yeah, no, I remember the eighteen. The mini. I if, was, the if it was a minivan, it'd be a little different show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, television: The Royal Wedding, Prince Charles, Lady Diana. Over a billion people watched it. Yeah, July 29th, nineteen eighty one. Uh. <laughs> That's like reading news. <laughs> I mean, just the slow turn yeah, with, into with the paper. <laughs> and that's all for television today. All right. Let's kick it over to it. Nate with the weather. Uh, hey. <laughs> and Aaron with sports. <laughs> yeah. uh, if who- we were a news team, who would be? I mean, are you the lead anchor or are you kind of the, the funny guy you kick it to in the field? I think he's Ron Burgundy. You Ron yeah. Burgundy because you'll read anything in the teleprompter. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's Whatever they put in there. Yeah, I'm probably Steve Carell. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I don't remember <laughs> that guy's name. Yeah, um, David. K. I'm Christina Applegate. <laughs> <laughs> You've taken his job. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Who Shot Jr. finale of Dallas was up at that time the most watched TV show in TV history. You guys heard about? Yeah. Who shot? I mean, I remember all this stuff. Yeah. Wasn't it a cliffhanger? Well, you were into uh, New Kids on the Block, so this was probably right up your alley. <laughs> nice soap opera. You yeah. and all you and all the moms watched it. <laughs> this was uh, early '80s, and my mom watched all these shows: Dallas, yeah. Dynasty, Knott's Landing. And was we, you, did your dad watch them? I mean, we all had one TV, so he, he had to. Yeah, yeah. But we had the Friday night Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, Incredible Hulk. <laughs> yeah, Dallas. And then y'all would do the radio. Yeah. And then we go backwards. <laughs> uh, and listen to Yeehaw. But it was a cl- season ending cliffhanger, and you had to wait all summer to find out. And there was all this speculation about who shot JR. And there were songs about it, and mm-hmm. uh, all the tabloids, and just they wouldn't tell the, the actors. I think they sh- filmed it in a way where only the person who shot him actually even knows. Yeah. They didn't want the actors to give it away. Mm hmm. So it was pretty crazy. Who shot him? His mistress. Was it a surprise? Or? I mean, it got to the point where people had speculated about everyone, so there's not going to be a surprise because they literally listed every, like his mom or, mm-hmm. you know, so they're so I don't think it was a huge surprise. Yeah, then when did they felt the payoff? Did they feel good about it? Yeah, were people happy with the way it turned out? I mean, I, don't, I feel like people would be much more hard on it now because we just – know so much more now and we i think it was kind of new and fresh like oh wow can you believe i think her name was christina i feel like sometimes when shows like that when they build it up so big it's just there's no way to yeah please everybody but back then i think you still could kind of yeah because yeah they didn't they didn't have a ton of that stuff right i mean you only have so many channels to begin with so there's only you're competing with nothing right because there's all you got is you're going to be the best of like 20 shows yeah that's it three channels Crazy. Three channels. I remember when channels started getting uh, 
There started to be a lot more. Yeah. When you got four or five? <laughs> or no, it was, uh, we started getting like 20. I mean, yeah. you, a lot of them you wouldn't get because yeah. you had to pay for them. You don't right. watch, you could go to HBO and it'd be scrambled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, or something. But when, yeah, when they started being like more channels, it was just so crazy. Like, golly, there's so many more channels. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, my cousin had basic cable and they could get WGN and TBS and watch Cubs and Braves game. I was so jealous because, that was in the eighties, but we didn't. I didn't have cable till I got to college. <laughs> we lived out in the country and didn't come there, and we weren't paying for a satellite dish the size of our house. Was your roommate in college just like, <laughs> just you were like, <laughs> where what are you is from? This? <laughs> Why are you wearing your kids on the block uh, shirt? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you brought that in your Coca Cola shirt, <laughs> and then you go, what is this? You go to bed. <laughs> Framing his autograph yeah, on the wall yeah. of that guy, Carlos Groves. <laughs> I met Carlos Groves once. You're like, oh, is he the guy that comes off the bench? You loser! <laughs> You're asking for that guy. They get, they get. It's not even the main guy. Did you get Shaq's autograph? No, no, I got Carlos Groves. <laughs> so in 1983, the Mash finale aired, and somehow people just knew this was going to. I mean, advertisers. They knew it was going to be a huge deal, so they started buying 30-second commercials for $450,000, which was more than the Super Bowl that year. Mm-hmm. And the night it aired, a large area of California suffered a power outage due to a storm, which wow. <laughs> prevented many people from watching the series finale for three weeks. Uh, but it had 106 million viewers. It passed Who Shot JR for the most viewed episode ever. And from 1983 to 2010, it was still the most watched TV broadcast in American history, um, until the Super Bowl finally passed it, I feel like Mash was very much in its time. I didn't watch Mash. I remember, my, I think my parents watched Mash. I remember people watching Mash or mm-hmm. something. Uh, but it's like a show that doesn't get talked about anymore. I feel like, like it's for being the biggest show in the world. Sign like Seinfeld, yeah, and we still talk about it. It's on TV mm-hmm. every day, all day. Uh, Andy Griffith, I feel like is yeah. The, I was gonna say Andy Griffith outlived like, it. I feel like Mash just feels like it was when it was done. It was done, and the people that watched it loved it, and then no one talked about it ever again after that. Well, they tried a spinoff show called After Mash, which showed them when they all got back to America, and it just <laughs> it tanked quickly. Yeah, it was almost like everybody was just done. Yeah, yeah. It was it was almost like that Mash was like the first big show. Maybe not, but the Mash finale was so dark too. Yeah, uh, just. Really dark. You were watching all that? I mean, I remember it, yeah. Were you allowed to watch it? or? I think so. I think I didn't watch MASH as a kid, but I think the finale, we knew it was such a big deal. So yeah. you just kind of watch to see what happened. Was there stuff on TV back then that would be inappropriate enough for parents to be like, I'm not going to let my kids watch that? Or wasn't everything kind of innocent and wholesome in a way? Well, there's certainly words that said back then that wouldn't be allowed now. Yeah, like some of those Norman Lear shows from the seventies and eighties. I mean, they said stuff that oh, okay. so many things would get canceled now. Did you have stuff you weren't allowed to watch? Yeah, mm-hmm. Simpsons were big for me. I I couldn't watch the Simpsons yeah. either. But they, uh, uh, what? Uh, God, what was I going to say? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Well, the top shows um, of the eighties, Dallas dominated that first half of the eighties, and then the back half. Cosby Show was number one for five straight years in the 80s. Last week, I said, can you believe All in the Family? Well, it happened the next decade, too. Five <laughs> straight years, number one show. Wow. Really? And last year, The Simpsons came in at number 28. In 1989, 90 year, and it's still on. Oh, wow. That's when it started, 89? The 89, 90 TV season. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Seinfeld started, too, right? Yep. Yeah. That wasn't a hit for a while, right? Uh, like till 92, yeah. 93 is when it okay. really caught on. Okay. But you always hear them talk about stuff, you know, uh, I've talked, God, what was, uh, I talked to, I know Phil Rosenthal who, uh, created Air Bellows Raymond. So we like, it's always fun to like, when I'll talk to him, I'll ask him questions about Air Bellows Raymond. And just when you, it's funny to hear him. He's talking like the shows that they competed against, like his views of some of these shows, that I've loved, or he was like, that show's the worst. Like, oh, yeah. I, I'm not saying he necessarily says that, but it's like that idea of like, because that was his competitor. Yeah. And so you would be like, yeah, in that moment, he is competing with these people. And like, you like home improvement, they're like, you know, they put us in, they'd say something about being in a t- bad time slot. 
And when they put us here, then we finally got, I forget, when was uh, Everybody Loves Raymond? Was it Monday? Maybe that's when Monday or, or I don't Monday. remember. Uh, Monday or Friday or something. But it was like they, they put us here and we got, no one watched us and then they moved us to here and then everybody, and then we caught on and everybody loved it. Uh, it's, it's just funny to hear the shows that they were, you know, home improvement, home improvement was a force. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a big show for us growing show. up. Yeah. Yeah. That's all nineties though. Yeah. We'll get into that. It yeah. all blends together. Dude. It all blends <laughs> together. Uh, other TV shows that launched in the eighties, CNN, June mm-hmm. 1st, 1980 became the first 24 hour cable news channel. Channel. Oh yeah. Not TV shows. Like it invented a new channel. Yeah. 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 It's like the van. Yeah. And it's a whole new thing. It's a whole new thing. <laughs> Another new channel, MTV. Oh, De- yeah. Debuted 1981. That really kind of fizzled out now. MTV? Well, I guess uh, MTV, I guess with the, they, they kind of got that teen mom kind of thing going. That's like their big thing. There's like eight different variations of that yeah. show now. Yeah. Just just leaning into just it. It's the teen moms. And there's multiple MTVs, right? Isn't there M- like Yeah, a- MTV two. And I think, yeah, the Viacom owns all those channels. Nickelodeon. The very first video was <laughs> CBS. Sung by the Bugles called Video Killed the Radio Star. That was the first video. And they wrote that song probably because of I don't think they did. I think they just played it ironically. I think they already had the song. Yeah. Hmm. Radio's kind of back though with the fact that Spotify and that kind of thing. It's all I mean, you're just you, now you're getting there's no DJ, so it kind of killed the DJ. But I mean, radio play is kind of back, but you can now just listen to what, what you want to listen to. Like you know, people listen to this podcast, so they listen to whatever. Uh, your car ride is a lot. Are they watch West Wing driving 100 miles an hour down <laughs> 65, uh, just swerving in and out. <laughs> Uh, which, by the way, I have not started. I thought of it. I thought about it last night, and I was like, I don't know. Oh, how, did you watch the pilot? Is that what, were you in? Yeah. It? Okay. Yeah, I was into it. I might watch a couple episodes, and then uh, yeah. I, last night I was trying to. I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch something again. I'm watching the Manchurian Candidate. It's a movie. The, the right? new one or the yeah, old one? The old one, Denzel Washington. That's the new one. That's the new one. Oh, 2004. Well, there's one from like the 60s oh, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little different than I thought it was going to be. It's pretty good though, man. Yeah, I don't know. Denzel's got a bright. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah, he's got a good career. I think. <laughs> Some of that stuff you can't believe it was two thousand four. Like Denzel yeah. Washington, you think well, he was famous in the eighties or something, and then you're like, was this his first big movie, Manchurian Candidate, or no? No, he won an Oscar for Glory in like oh, 1990. Glory was the, probably the first movie I ever remember watching. Weirdly enough, really, yeah, one of them. That I remember, I loved Glory. We had it on it's VHS, and I used to watch it all the time. You started off pretty intense, huh? Huh? Watching movies out the gate. Mm. Yeah, you, like just, <laughs> you're not watching like Beauty and the I went, Beast. I or... went. Uh, we did Glory, then I did the program, and then I did <laughs> Schindler's uh, List. Schindler. <laughs> now I forget why we had Glory. We had Glory on, uh, like recorded on a tape or something. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I remember watching Glory a lot. He was on Saint Elsewhere. He was like one of the doctors on St. Elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And then I think Glory's like his first big breakout role. That is a great movie. In 89. All right, so it even counts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys want to guess the top movies of the 80s? Yes. Star uh, Wars. <laughs> Jaws. I mean, the top two is have it, to be Star Wars, right? Oh, you were serious. Yeah. Because you were saying like Star Wars was the top movie of the 70s. Yeah, but weren't the, didn't more come out? Well, you got at least, if you're even going to guess that, name the name of the movie. The Empire's Galactic Hope strikes uh, back. That's number three. Okay. Uh, hey, what's the second? I don't know. I don't even know. I don't just say them. You I guessed last I'm... week. E.T. was number one. Oh yeah, the first movie I ever saw. When did that come out? Eighty <laughs> five. You just said Glory. Uh, Glory. Yeah. <laughs> now E.T. I don't remember E.T. But I was five. My parents took me to E.T. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Scream. <laughs> yeah. Scream is my favorite. <laughs> I right. remember. I remember Glory. Et. I, my parents took me to the movies to go see it. Eighty seven. Uh, Et. Yeah. Eighty two. Eighty two. <laughs> You're three. Yeah. So I was three. So yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. But Et. Et was number one. Return of the Jedi two and Empire Strikes Back three. Et bigger than Star Wars. 
I didn't know it was that big. Well, it's, Star Wars was in the seventies, but I mean, yeah, the, those two movies. I mean, yeah, yeah, ET was huge. ET was a big movie. The top Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, Never seen it. Top. You've seen ET? No. Yeah. So we just, we just, just showed. They watched it the other day. Is it too late? To watch ET? Yeah. No. I so I'm in that's why I went to like Manchurian Canada. I'm kind of in a uh mood. It's like I always get you gotta get caught in moves. Like I'm in, in some military moods. So I mean I, I did Lone Survivor, American Sniper, yeah. uh uh like Green Zone. Like I, I don't know, I went through I was in kind of just like a military kind of and I gotta find some more. I don't I'm about out of it. Uh and then I could watch Glory again. Uh, and so then Manchurian Candidate was like last night. I watched Pelican Brief. Uh, and so, I, like, I'll get in these kind of uh, moods to do stuff. Oh, what was the whole point of this? What were we saying? Oh, but, but these old movies. Yeah. Like, sometimes you you realize, oh, I because I've also been in a kick of be like, everything's the same movie now. Every, like, I'm getting... I used to always be just like, I'm on board with like chains and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not saying I'm not, but it's, uh, it's all kind of going these movies. It's every movie's a Marvel movie. Everything. Everything's a superhero movie that Loki or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's in a commercial. He's in a Honda, Hyundai commercial. Well, he has a new show now on Apple plus. So why is he driving a Hyundai car? <laughs> like it's, it's, uh, is it Honda, right? Hyundai. Or Hyundai. Disney, excuse me, Disney plus. Yeah. It's like, he's just driving that car now and you just, it, all, it starts feeling gross. Where you go like, oh, so y'all just, I, I don't even see anything outside of what y'all want mm -hmm. me to see. And you're all combined. You're all just like, here's fifth, now all the superheroes are getting together. <laughs> and every movie is a superhero movie. So you got to go back to some of these old movies and I'm appreciating them a little bit more. to like, oh, it's a story. Yeah. Oh, it's a- Something original. It's something original. It's something like thought of instead of being like, now Iron Man is going to go to Mars. Like, or so, I don't know, like whatever. And then they they go, well, what if we get Iron Man and this guy and we get them together? And now they come and this yeah. Loki, and I don't even know who this Loki is. And it's this world that they're building. They're doing Star Wars. We're doing Mandalorian, yeah. which I mean, was great. But, it, you know, can you believe Mandalorian? You're like, they're just, yeah, dude, they're making the same thing. It's mm -hmm. all the same thing. All the movies that come out are these giant movies. Nothing's just... Nothing's just like a well, like suspenseful kind of like real acting. You know, it's, it's, I mean, that's where you've seen the Oscars or all these movies you never heard of because maybe that's the only place that they're yeah. at. I mean, now, you know, the acting is, yeah, dude, you are going to be as a super hero. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I mean, you, you get to wear a mask the whole time. <laughs> and we're going to tell a story that is it's the same story. Yeah. Here's Spider Man. How do you get bit? Oh, we'll show you again. Uh, <laughs> we'll do it one more time. They're making a new Spider Man with all the old Spider Mans in it. <laughs> I mean, this one, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it's its not getting, it's not even fun anymore, dude. Like, they're not, it's such a, uh, it's such a, like, money machine that you go, like, I don't want to be a part of this. And you, and you can't even not be a part of it. It's on, you know, the NBA finals is going to be the NBA. It, it, all the sports are going to just be like, we have everything. We're going to jam all this down your throat. Mm -hmm. You're never going to go see an original like movie idea. And they're having problems with this, with, uh, with movies and trying to sell movies now. Like people are like TV. That's why TV kind of came back because TV is a place where they could tell stories and people, TV is now the way that you could tell, you know, you could have a breaking bad. You can have all these kind of, these kind of shows that are doing stuff where movies are just like, if it's not going to make a billion dollars and they don't even, then don't even yeah. waste our time. Yeah. And if the whole world's not going to go see this movie, then we don't care. Mm -hmm. And so then you lose all the, you're losing all those good actors that you're not going to Denzel Washington's the, you know, all these kind of crazy actors that became huge, but they're just not making that kind of stuff anymore. It's like, it's the same, it's the same movie. I mean, fast and furious. They're doing, this is the tenth one, like it's, it doesn't even matter. Do they have a tenth one does coming it, out. Uh, how many are there? Nine or ten. Nine or there, it does. It doesn't even. It, who cares? It doesn't. And I, I loved. I I I was on board with the Fast and Furious. I think I watched the first three, and then you're like, okay. And then they've kept going. You're not even halfway done. Not not even <laughs> close. And then it it all just becomes like, all right, yeah, dude, they're all worth, you know, five hundred million dollars. Yeah. And then. You know, good for them. They get to go be in something. I'm not saying you're not going to 
you're going to say, and I don't blame the actors, you're not going to say no to this stuff, yeah. but it just seems like it's all being created by, I mean, it's the same stuff, dude. There's no, it's no original thought. There's no original person. There's no original, it's, you know, you're, it's all your phone. It's Apple or whatever. My favorite movie as a kid was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. And I was told, I don't know if this is true or not, but it was the first movie where, you know, how now in basically every movie, especially action movie, the char- main character, there's going to be an opening scene right out of the gate before we even get into the main storyline. They're going to yeah. establish the character, do something crazy, mm-hmm. and then it kind of starts the real story. Raiders of the Lost Ark, I was told, was the first movie that ever did that. Up until then, movies would just be a slow build. But in Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first 10, 15 minutes, there's that crazy scene in the cave where mm. he does all that. That has nothing to do with the rest of the story. Yeah. And it changed movies forever because now they all do that. Yeah. It gets you hooked right away. Yeah. 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 It establishes who the character is, and then you start the main story that, that you're doing. You, you kind of f- forget which you're making a new one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh which that one uh, maybe, but uh, you're not even that excited anymore. I mean, g- again, like these people are all in the same movies. It's all the same. Tom Hanks, Harrison Ford. You're like, I don't know. When have I not seen you? I see yeah, you every day. All the time. So when, who, how am I excited? Dude, I'm, when they remade Spider-Man, it was so exciting. I was like, are you kidding me? And then like Superman, why does, they can't get Superman correct, right? Like yeah. people don't, it's like, I would be excited about us if they did a solid Superman. Or when they did Batman, when all this stuff kind of started, it was like, oh man, we couldn't wait and we wanted it. Yeah. And but they and that's the problem. And so they get these, I know it just from being somewhat in the writing shows and being with all these writers, uh, they get it's basically the same thing. Hey, we're just trying to re- like just pump this out again and like it's gonna be people go watch this and it doesn't it's almost like theme parks. You're just creating theme parks and you're like it doesn't matter you just keep jamming yeah, stuff these out idiots there will go. they yeah, go yeah. they're gonna go you need something to do yeah. you're gonna go and now they're just coming out on HBO Max you can just watch them at home now or go to see the theater it's like it doesn't matter just jam everything out there and like uh, and it's it, it's not it's not a good thing and when you watch these old movies you go wow that's like I don't know everybody's really good in it like I appreciate the acting a little bit more and mm-hmm. Or a lot more. And, you know, you're just more aware of it. I, You know, you just, I, mean, I don't know, maybe you get older and you're just like, I, I don't want this flashy. I don't I don't care. You know, I almost, I'd be fine with maybe another Transformers movie. They could do that. <laughs> 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 I don't feel like they've done that a ton. The exact opposite of everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Well, Transformers wait. was the first movie you saw. Yeah. Transformers yeah. was. Yeah. What, uh, when was the last Transformers I mean, I think they just had one come out, didn't they? Oh, so maybe maybe I don't want another one. They hold off for a few more years. They may have put it on hold because of COVID, but there was one that was either about to come out or came out. I can't remember. See, I always thought thought they did two. Oh, they've done five. Never mind. (laughs) And they did Bumblebee, got his own thing. (laughs) All right. I was wrong. I was way off. Michael Bay. So it's like, it's just, uh, yeah. So I was wrong about Transformers. I I, I kind of lost. I thought they did. There's like one coming one. out in 2022. Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Mm, so I got to catch up. This time it's different. <laughs> so I was wrong. All right. So I'm wrong about Transformers. But stop it. No more of those. Then. But it's just these same kind of things. They're not making. Uh, they're not making like a solid movie. It's just kind of like who cares? It's so chaos in the movie that you go. I think it's great. I don't know. I mean, you're, they're just making you exactly how I always say with, I, I am with music where you don't know. And you notice it more with music. Even when you hear these old songs and they're, you know, it's like a, you, there's a lot of words. And now <laughs> there's like, they say, hey, basically the whole time. Yeah. They go, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. And then blah, blah, blah. And don't really say much. You can, I mean, as a songwriter, uh, <laughs> yeah, but you can write a song and be pretty. You think quick. part of that is you remember the really good music and we forget about the bad music. It's probably some know, truth to that. We look back. It's like I always think about Stairway to Heaven. The year that Stairway to Heaven came out, the number one song was Sugar Sugar by the Archies <laughs> that year. And nobody cares about that song now, but everyone loves Stairway well, to Heaven. Well, there's still gonna be bad music, there's still be bad music back then, but I don't think so. I mean, 
but you can it's it's now it's a it's it's about the tune or the you know like the beat or whatever mm-hmm. and that's what kind of does it and you know they're I, I i like them i like these songs you know we you listen to them and they're fun and like i don't you know again i don't listen to words i don't yeah it doesn't resonate with me when i listen to a story going like oh uh, this is about i mean i'll ask harper I'll be like, what is this? What are they saying? <laughs> like, cause I she'll be like, oh, it's this this like a li- they're little stories, and I don't, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, they don't click with me at all. Like, I don't get that one bit. Uh, but yeah, with I don't know, I just thought it like yeah, the movies and stuff. It's just getting it's bad. It's the same thing, and that's why it's gonna be harder and harder to get Hollywood's getting smaller and smaller. It's not getting bigger. It's getting smaller and smaller. You did a good movie. We're gonna make you do fifty of them. And yeah. guess what? Tom Cruise is still alive, <laughs> and he's doing them. Too. Tom Hanks still alive. Julia Roberts, Brad Pitt, and, everybody's still alive. And Loki's gonna team up with you. And Loki's <laughs> going to drive a bus. <laughs> we're doing a thing with Greyhound, so he drives a bus now. <laughs> You're supposed to believe this superhero thing. Is Superman real? Well, I thought he was real until he took my keys back at Avis, and then. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe he's not. I guess he's got hard times. But that's where all the, like, it is. Like, these people don't get out of the way. You don't get out of the way. You don't get new stuff. And then it gets too, just underneath it, it gets, like, very spread out. Like, no one really rises to the top. Like, it's hard to break through. Like, and then the younger ones, they're not the new actors. That's when you create a TV show. It's all about, well, how young? Let's get some young people, which they, is something ridiculous. Because you're like, young people ain't spending money. They ain't watching this show. They don't, they don't care about your show. It's it's They're not buying whatever you're selling. They're not whatever. Uh, and so they're not making any... No one's being really good. Like the Daniel Day-Lewis. There's not... Who's that? I guess Hardy. Tom is, Hardy? Tom Hardy's probably... Is is that kind of similar kind of thing. Where he's like kind of... I feel like very private. You don't really know what he does. But he's like... If he's going to be in something, you know it's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. That's... Yeah. So I'm not trying to say there's no movies that are great. Yeah. But it's it's far and few, you know. Or f- is that right? Far and few between? Few, few and, and far between. Few yeah. and far between. Yeah. Recycling a lot of the old ideas. I mean, everything's just like, let's redo this again. Yeah. And I think people are over that. People want original ideas. That's why, you know, I don't know. Like all that, like you know, when the set, like Inception came out, or like all this kind of stuff. But even some, they're getting so. I feel like too so inside baseball. It's so, they're so smart. But won't the market determine for them when people are tired of it? I, don't know, I mean, they're only going to give you a billion dollar if you can only go watch Transformers. Then what else? You can't go do anything else. People just want to go do something, and you got kids, and they know you got kids. So you're gonna be like, and that, and then, then they, then they go come to our theme park. That's also got all this stuff. Yeah. It's the only thing you're allowed to enjoy is the thing that they want to do. Like, it, there's nothing. There's no original. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You, uh, well, all right, we're gonna make you a uh, Batman, and now you're gonna go well, Harry Potter, <laughs> which I'm, Harry Potter was actually a, probably a great one. Like, so that was probably one of the. You know, They're remaking Harry Potter too. Really, remaking it as an HBO series. Mm. And they just I do think that. Will be awesome. And they just make it. Yeah. Yeah. Which I will get excited yeah. about. So you're saying that there needs. Well, to be maybe in- you're at the age now that would be. Ex- that's you, my Star Wars. That's your. That's you're going to see that new thing and go yeah. like, oh man, I'm so happy they're recreating this because yeah. you have such fond memories of watching it as a kid. So maybe it's just a cycle of age, and I'm perfectly the age above you. Where when you turn forty, uh, or turn my age, forty two, you're going to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. This is getting ridiculous. Make something new. And then you go just watch old stuff. Could be, yeah. you know. The uh, top box office stars of the 80s, number one, Harrison Ford. He was th- Han Solo and Indiana Jones. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's two pretty good. Pretty crazy. Yeah, two pretty big career Same moves. person. Yeah. Same, I mean, like. Still around. Still, I know. Still around, still making it. And the two biggest movies they got going back then, they used the one guy for <laughs> I mean, dude, there's like Hollywood always talks about diversity. This is the least diverse place on earth. <laughs> it's Not even people. like about with race, just with about like we don't even use different people. Yeah. We don't even we have the same person that we just uh-huh. use for everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Eddie Murphy was second. That's pretty interesting. Forty Eight Hours, Beverly Hills Cop, all those movies. Yeah. But he would that be different? His feel his movies feel different. 
There was more than one Beverly Hills cop, uh, but he did a lot of different coming to America, the golden child, stuff like that. I feel like Eddie Murphy got his own star. He became a star because of him. Like that, maybe that's what, like too, he built that because he was a stand up. He got that audience. And the movies came after. Yeah. 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 Not the other way around. Not the other way around. But yeah, Eddie Murphy's still, but Eddie Murphy did it right. He, He left. He started making a bunch of movies, got out of the way. I mean, he's in, like, he pops up and stuff, and they, Nutty Professor, when you can watch something like that where you're like, no one can do that. Or like Robin Williams, no one, that guy's the best at that. Uh, and he, But he's kind of, what is he, I mean, I'm sure he's come up with stuff, but it's not like it's overwhelming, like it's just jammed down your throat. I mean, he did Dolomite last year. I like Shia LaBeouf, like my Transformers. Yeah. I think he's awesome. He's very good. Yeah, and he's a very, his own person. Mm-hmm. I, I, I. That's a guy I remember watching that HBO series, The Green Something, where they they uh, with Matt Damon. I want to say uh, uh, Project Greenlight. Project Greenlight, where he's, such he a gets good picked show. to be in the movie, and he gets picked to be in that movie. And I I remember watching that Project Greenlight. I remember being like, God, I love this kid. Mm-hmm. And then he started being everything else, and you're like, and I love him now. I love it. I, he's very. He was he in the just, last Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with him getting whatever he wants. <laughs> Number three was Sylvester Stallone, and four was Tom Cruise, the biggest stars of the 80s. All, all still around. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone, I, I think I'm – he built, he wrote his own stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Rocky. Rambo, Rocky. Like it's like you go create your own thing. He's like, yeah, I just create – I do me. Mm-hmm. I do this, and I create my thing. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah, not, he's not like, what if Rambo teamed up with Indiana Jones? I guess that maybe that's the problem. Like yeah, yeah. they start – well, they just put out a new Rambo like last year. With, I think they're doing with another Sylvester one. Stallone? Yeah, I think they're doing another one. Probably, I'll watch it. I watch the last <laughs> one. I get excited about those. Okay, that if you gonna let me watch some eighty year old man do something, I'm gonna go watch yeah. it. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I can't wait for that one to come out. Rambo, can't wait for the new Transformers to hit the streets. <laughs> <laughs> what about? I say, you know. Well, it says here, 1984. I, I rant, and I hope there's just something in there people take out of it, and they leave. It's a lot of garbage. <laughs> it would be. It's like going through garbage, and you're looking for a lottery ticket, and you're like, I promise there's one in there. Yeah. Maybe it's only worth $5, but. <laughs> if you have the time, why not? You, you want certain time. people to get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, some. The ones, yeah. Uh, in 1984, the PG-13 rating. Came but maybe on. those guys should get out of the way too. Who? I mean, you know, Sylvester Sloan, like, it's like, I don't know. Maybe they should. Like, you, how much is enough? Like, when you go, like, all right, dude, find your next Rambo. Yeah. I'm fine. Go keep making Rambo. Like, like, I almost like it's the big budget stuff. I don't, you know, it's the, I guess it's like the Marvel. It's like become, it's like the superhero stuff has gotten just where you're like, all right, dude, now they're all together. Now we, you know, it's like, this is. It's 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 gotten too too far. Mm-hmm. Like maybe that's it. It's like go find Rambo. But like go find us. Give us the next Rambo. Like I like Jason Statham. He does that in everything. He does that. And you're like, yeah, I like that. So I want. I just go watch that. And then it's like he makes his own kind of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I make any sense. Is it I agree fair? With you. I agree with you. Yeah. I have dyslexia, so <laughs> I might mean all the other stuff. <laughs> Maybe I do love all of it. And maybe this is all I'll ever go see. He said it all backwards. Yeah, <laughs> dyslexia and grammar issues. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in music, Michael Jackson released Thr- Thriller in 1982. I remember this so well. Yeah, and it became yeah I remember that. The best-selling uh, album of all time. Last week I said the Eagles. Uh, Eagles. Sorry, Eagles. Greatest Hits. <laughs> Uh, and it is in America, but Thriller is still the best-selling album worldwide of all time. I remember watching that. It was scary. I want you'd want. Are you talking about the video? The video. You'd watch it during the day. Yeah, it was very scary. Is that 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 mm-hmm. dance? I mean, yeah, nobody had ever done. Any, do it, nobody had ever done anything like yeah. that. To mm-hmm. I mean, it was like fifteen-minute-long video. It was yeah. a story. It was scary. Yeah. yeah, zombies and it was, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, best-selling artist of the '80s was Prince. I mean, we get some you know, we talk about like most famous people. 
But Michael Jackson got to be up there as one of the most of all time. Yeah, somebody said the comment on that in one of the comments. If but not, we've we've been talking about people a lot today. Yeah, but yeah, of all but time. But as far as like all time, like who, you know. But I guess it's just a matter of your lot. You know, I'm sure. You know. Well, in the '80s, he was so huge. Uh, number one song of that decade was Olivia Newton John's "Physical." <laughs> your mom. Do jazz sides to that? No. From Greece? No. The, oh. She was the singer. Yeah, Olivia yeah. Newton John okay. from Greece, but okay. she was a singer as well. Yeah. Super Bowl Shuffle became a popular hit in '85. <laughs> Chicago Bears. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Got up. Boy, the way. Chicago. Not to trash your bear, the Bears, but they've really been riding that '85 wave. <laughs> I know. Right? My God, they've been like milking they, that for a while. Good night, dude. Every every acts like everybody acts like they should have fifty Super Bowls. Like, and you're like. Y'all have done nothing. Yeah. You've done, I mean, I'm a Jay Cutler defender just this with Vandy. Yeah. He's, I think. Uh, Jay Cutlery. Jay Cutlery. Cutler. That's what I should. Cutler E. Cutler E. There you go. Oh, now I got it. Can you hear me say that? Uh, Jay Cutler E. <laughs> Jay <can you> say, <laughs> say Jay. Yeah. Jay Cutler. Some Jay Cutler E. Is Cutler E how you say it? Cutler. Cutler E. Cutler E. So if I said cutlery, you would it would turn around <laughs> cutlery, cutlery. <laughs> it's almost there, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, the Bears band, they yeah. good night. I mean, you just yeah. act like golly, we can't get it together. You're like y'all won in '85, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I think they went to one Super Bowl with Lovey Smith, Rex Go- Grossman. Is that who it was? Yeah, the Colts wow. beat them. Uh, yeah, but it's like it's like every year is like, can we not get it together? You're like y'all won. I mean, 30 years ago, like, let's not act like we are, you know. Yeah. No, this season's a fluke. No, that season yeah, was a fluke. That season was a fluke. There you go. I'm glad you remember bringing this up. This is Madison Square Garden, one month, 19, no, not one month, one year, 1987. Look at who all played at Madison. I mean, over half of those are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That was back, like, someone, so. Uh, so this, these are all in, like, consecutive weekends. Yeah. Oh man! But I mean, it is a and who who? did Poison, Iron Maiden, Eric Clapton, Huey Lewis and the News, Luther Vandross, Brian Adams, Duran Duran, Paul Simon, Tom Petty. It's just the biggest names: Bon Jovi, yeah, Billy Idol, Beastie Boys, Uh, Whitney Houston, The Grateful Dead, White Snake, Pink Floyd, Eddie Murphy. Two shows. Look at that. Yep. I mean, there's not a ton of two shows. No. The only two shows there were Brian Adams. Grateful Dead. Uh, Duran Duran. Luther Vandross. Uh, Grateful Dead. And then uh, yeah. Pink Floyd and Eddie Murphy. Out of That's all those. Cards, man. Russ. Yeah. Rush. Uh, yeah. Jose. Who's that? It's a great decade for entertainment. Jose man. Feliciano. Um, Feliciano. Yeah. yeah, I mean, imagine just like they were just seeing everything, dude. Just was like killer after killer. Molly Crew and White Snake. I worked a Brian Adams concert. That guy is unreal. Dude. Yeah, where at? At the Fontenelle in White's Creek. Yeah, that's uh, Barbara Mandrell's old house, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. My dad did a magic show there. Oh yeah, I was thinking you yeah. did a show there with Joe Walsh. I didn't do a show, but when I went to the Joe Walsh, oh okay, uh, mm-hmm. concert, we went there afterwards. And uh, and hung out, and uh, and she was in uh, Barbara Mando's daughter was there, and my dad did the birthday for her. It was for it was her wow. five. She was five, and so I went. We took a picture, and I told her, and she's oh. like, she, I, I don't know. I guess she was five. She was something. She mm-hmm. was a kid, and uh, I remember my dad going to it because my dad was like, it was a big deal. He's like, got a sh- private show for at Barbara Mandrell's house, and we were like. That's so crazy. <laughs> and he was driving to her house. And right. there's a lot of that fun stuff with my dad where he did. He opened for uh, – he, he did something with Cosby once. He opened for Cosby once. Oh, I remember and him then, telling me the story. Yeah, and, like, he uh, – this was after all the Cosby stuff came out. And they, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is another jailhouse yeah. show. Yeah, so this was, yeah, he was in jail. Uh, Your dad's the only one that would work with him. Yeah. Uh, now, this is, so I remember, like, you know, he would get to do all this kind of crazy stuff. He opened for Jay Leno once, which I now know Jay Leno, and I, I think I have told Jay Leno. Mm. Uh, 
But with Cosby, he did. Uh, he came home, and I remember he had. Uh, he brought all this popcorn home. I mean, he couldn't believe it. Like it's so crazy. It just. I remember. It was. It was nuts that he was going to do it, and then he, he. Where was this? I don't even know. Maybe Memphis or okay. I don't, you know something. Uh, and he comes home and he brought a, a giant bag of popcorn. Because Cosby had on his, because, you know, we're learning about my dad's like, he had his own green room. And right when, yeah. you know, my dad didn't really meet him long. He just, he's, you know, Cosby like said, hey, nice to meet you. Great job. And he's like, you have anything you want in that green room. I'm leaving right after the show. And so he went in the green room and then he had uh, that flavored water, mm-hmm. like in a glass bottle. Mm-hmm. with like a cherry. I mean, it, I mean, it was like getting a gold bar. Like you know, <laughs> yeah, I, we never yeah. even seen that. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't know what those were. Like yeah. they, they was such a fancy kind of thing. And he brought home uh, the giant bag of popcorn, and all of it was from Cosby's green room. And we were like, "This is crazy!" Yeah. Like I can't believe he got all this stuff. Like, and he was like, "Yeah, he doesn't even use it. It's all this." <laughs> He's like, "It's just in there," and like no one. It's like you, you know. Which I, my dad still has, like, and it's funny now to be doing shows and then being like, yeah, my green room. I get a lot of stuff taken off my rider unless it's like in Nashville, unless I know I'm going to have a lot of guests. Yeah. I try to keep it, my rider is uh, nothing. Like, is there, I have like mints, I have an iced coffee. Uh, and then, because you write what, well, I don't know if people know this, when you do a rider, uh, there, I think there's a budget for it, but sometimes you end up paying for stuff, which is funny because sometimes even if there's, uh other artists listen to, like you could you could be like man every show i get you know 50 beers and all this because you're like <laughs> yeah dude you're paying for probably a lot of that yeah, it so comes out of your end yeah unless you're using it there's no reason for it the one thing you do is you a lot of times the staff there will take it but like we'd have like there'd be like make a sandwich or something i always have sandwiches which i don't even eat those like i don't really eat i'm not gonna eat before a show uh and we're gonna go probably order food after uh, so I, I, I get rid of that stuff too, but you'd eat a sandwich. Yeah. You kept it on the rudder for a while just for me. For you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how much I do for this guy. <laughs> can't, I've paid for the sandwiches to be there. Just so, <laughs> just to make just me so happy. bread sandwich here could eat. Uh, <laughs> bread stick. Yeah. Bread stick. And they, uh, they're, yeah. And so my dad would always make a sandwich when he, when he comes out with me. Yeah. He'll use all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like a, it's their, it's the, uh, it's an old, it's not old, but it's a, you don't, it's not, you're not going to, yeah, it's all there. You're like, you got to use it. Yeah. Why is it here? If you're not using it, you know, I have yeah. water, I have Diet Pepsi. Like, I've done so many shows where the show's over and we're leaving and I look around and I just stuff my backpack full of whatever's back there, you yeah. know, like gift baskets. Mm-hmm. I'll just stuff. No, I'm gonna take yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, 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 I just usually give it away. Like it's like you just figure right. like someone's gonna take it from the crew or you give it to you guys and be like, yeah. here, y'all can have this stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't have like unless it's like I have like I go to Louisville, I go to Nashville, L.A. Probably have uh, some mm-hmm. stuff back there. Like in New York, you know, anything I'm gonna have a lot of people probably behind backstage. Then you have like a little kind of area where we had uh, for when I first time I did T Pack. Was uh, what did we have? Uh, uh, I, I'm blanking the chicken, uh, Chick fil A. No, oh, no Hattie Hot, B's, Hattie B's, which I usually get because we know the Hattie B's guys. If anybody goes, Hattie B always asks me where to go eat in Nashville, go to Hattie B's. Yeah. Hattie B's is great. Prince's is the original one, they love Prince's, mm-hmm. so you can go Prince's or Hattie B's, but Hattie B's is great, and there it's not like it's just a offshoot like joke, mm-hmm. it's the real deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we had Hattie B's deliver food. Uh, which was fun. Uh, that guy's a great dude. Uh, but yeah, but people around those riders and the M and M's. We talked about the M and M rider here before. Mm-mm. You know the green M and M's thing. It's the famous story. The right? famous story. Who was yeah. it? Van Halen. Yeah, I don't know. People might know this. Yeah, it was like Van Halen was something. So they wanted green M and M's in their rider. And so if you got a bag of M and M's, you you had to pick them all out and it could only have the green ones in there. So everybody was like, they are the worst people alive. They're make you're making people do that stuff. The only reason they did it. Was because if they went in the room and they saw green M and M's, they knew that they you read the entire rider and did. And the right the green M and M's are not important; they're just there because people would skip steps. Mm-hmm. Well, we didn't know that the fire is set up or the this is set up, the music is set up. Like the the whole show has to be set up by these people. So if they don't get to the green M and M's, 
And how do I know that you went and read through everything? Yeah. Uh, and so that's why they did that. Is there, or that's the famous story of that. Yeah, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck did that with Goodwill Hunting. They put a random scene in the middle of the script of their two characters, like, oh yeah, n- hooking up with each other. Yeah, <laughs> it, just to see if people, because it was so out of nowhere that if somebody, and, and it was like Harvey Weinstein, whoever bought it, was like, great script, but what's with that random scene in the middle? And they're like, oh, he actually read the thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a good idea. You know what? I had a script once that I wrote. And uh, I was writing it with someone, and we were, I don't want to say any of it, what it is. It didn't go, it's not going to go anywhere. But, and we, uh, and the other person we're writing with was, I, I was like, starting to get busy and not helping me. But every time I would send it to the producers to go, like, hey, are we good? Can you send it to the studio? And they'd be like, well, we want him to go through it. I'm like, yeah, he's not answering, he's not doing it. So I don't know what to tell you. So then uh, I, uh, I sent it to them and they go, we want to do it. And I was so convinced that I go, they're not reading this and they're just not reading. Cause the, I, cause I'm the one that went through it and they want him to, and, but he's not co- doing this. So I go, okay, I'll do it. And then two days later I sent it. And I go, he went through it and they go, oh, it's great. And I, I never sent it to him. And I sent him the exact same script. <laughs> Didn't change a thing. And I go, yeah, he went through it and did his stuff. That's crazy. And then they just go, oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I mean, they like unbel- I was, I was so. I just knew. I just was like, I don't think they're reading this. Yeah. But then I've had it with another with my comedy's interest. I did it with uh, maybe a Netflix special or something, where I try to get an old joke in from maybe a Comedy Central special, and I try to sneak one in because it kind of fit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no one saw this special. I can sneak yeah. it in. And I put it in, and they go, "You did this in Live a God or whatever." I did it. Whoa. And so they were. And it's in the middle, and I was like, they ain't, oh, they ain't gonna catch in. this middle." Yeah. And they did it, and I, that's. But I have more respect, yeah. and will do more right because of that, because mm-hmm. I know that they went through, and uh, you know, you you go, "Oh, you're actually watching, and you know what's going on." Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joanne Grigioni, if she ever hears this, she's mm-hmm. the one that I that was like, "Holly, she's good job, Joanne." Yeah, good job, Joanne. Uh, some of the styles of the 80s, acid wash and stone wash jeans, leg warmers. Leg warmers? Yeah, you ever heard, like heard hand, of that? Like hand warmers, but you put them in your pants? No, they were like... Uh, leggings. Yeah, like leggings. You put over your pants. Oh, like from Viore. Like These are Viore. acid wash jeans. Yeah. I feel like that. this is made... They've come back in and out Everything's kind of Everything's kind of come back. Because again, we're done with being original. <laughs> And so that's the main takeaway from the eighties. The main takeaway from life. Eighties <laughs> was very original. I'm saying right now we're done being oh, original. Okay. So everything, no one comes up with anything new anymore. They come and they go, no, that's it. And they just redo it. And then your taste change. So it used to be all about, you know, when I first started comedy, all my videos, I, everything, I'm real baggy. Everything's baggy. Now everything's tighter. Cause mm-hmm. that's the, what's in style. And you, uh, but everything will just kind of stay the same because that's what, because no one's, look, I, I, I think it's hard to create stuff. I get it. But I mean, maybe try. Otherwise, I mean, they're reselling you old jeans. <laughs> yeah. This is the same thing with the movies. It's all just, no one's, no one's original. Now these leg warmers look like socks without the feet part. Well, that, I don't know if that's a good example. There was movies like uh, Flashdance. Not a bad and- example. Socks without the feet. <laughs> That's what they look like. I mean, yeah, I honestly thought I nailed it. Well, where did I get wrong? I mean, I just don't remember them looking quite like that. Um, I think they would usually go over leggings or stuff like that. Like this? Yeah, more yeah, like, like that. that. Yeah. So they look like socks. I, I, yeah, <laughs> the I, feet part. yeah. I think I, I saw them more like the other one at the top. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, parachute pants. What are you looking at yours in the Sears catalog? <laughs> <laughs> Me? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually. Yeah, yeah. Sears catalog was uh, the first, uh, you know. I mean, we would get a service merchandise catalog yeah. and I'd flip the, <laughs> look at the toys for. I mean, Sears was a big clothing place. They had, they had other stuff. I know, but it was like they had clothes. Sears? Sears was like people buy, you'd go there and buy clothes at Sears. Good, not appliances and. Yeah, I know. It's just funny. Now, do they are they open still? I don't know. 
Sears uh, is gone. Is it? Yeah. But they used to have, I mean, you it just, Sears, you think, what do you think of Sears? You think of like appliances and stuff like that? Yeah, I think of like leaf blowers. Yeah. I also mm. think of Shawshank Redemption. They mentioned Sears. Oh, oh really? It just goes to my head. Well, they're, uh, but they used to have, you'd go there and buy clothes. Like, it's kind of mm-hmm. funny to be like, why would you? Yeah. Yeah, it's like going to Home Depot. Yeah. Buy clothes now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, swatches. Y'all heard of swatches? Yeah, uh, yeah. The watch? Yeah. 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 Coca-Cola sure already mentioned. What uh, is a swatch? It's just another type of watch. It's like a Swiss watch. Well, what's different about it? Uh, just different name. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> cool, guys. Uh, some of the top commercials of the 80s. The Apple 1984 was supposedly the top commercial of all time. Oh, yeah. It only aired once in its entirety during the Super Bowl. Really? Apple? Mm-hmm. What was you it? You remember the one where the uh, Thor or whatever throws his hammer into that screen? It's a woman, I think. Uh, I didn't really understand it. It's a <laughs> Thor-looking woman. I don't woman. know if I even know it. Yeah, I'll pull it's it about this revolution that's coming. It was about the Macintosh computer. Yeah, and it was supposed to be like we're breaking through society and. Uh, Which kind of bombed, by the way, the computer that this is. Isn't that why maybe Steve Jobs lost his job? I don't know. I think he left later. It's the most. This is the most famous commercial. Not. I don't. It's not most famous. It's, it's I, recognized as the best. I'll go out there and say the most famous. All right. Name me a more famous commercial. Mean Joe Green. I got a couple Maybe. on here. That, Keep going. I don't think I've ever seen this commercial. So this aired during the eighty four. So it's a bunch of mindless drones walking in, and then this woman runs in with uh, a hammer. She's wearing a Hooters outfit. <laughs> yeah, she is essentially. And uh, yeah, I don't know what's being said. Something about conformity. Something Did you say about, Thor through the I, I just uh, I had a hammer in my mind, so yeah. I assumed it and was And so Thor. the opposite of Thor was a <laughs> young lady. A Hooters waitress. <laughs> in a Hooters outfit. But is that not Thor's hammer? Hits yeah. the screen, explodes. Everybody's broken from the spell. On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. That's powerful stuff. Dude. Yeah, I, I don't know if I know that commercial. <laughs> really? Being the most famous commercial. You don't, you don't, you never I remember that? the Apple. I don't think I remember that. In 1984 has... was a book about Big Brother watching you. So they're basically mm-hmm. saying Apple's going to free you. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, a couple more popular commercials. Apple. What? There's a. Uh, so they're, they're saying the computers are going to free you from Big Brother watching you. Yeah, and they're making, but they're going. So here, carry this electronic device in your home. <laughs> I think what so. did they think Big Brother was? A person? No, it's outside? not. I don't, it's not about Big Brother. It's about like uh, the the PCs and the computers of that day had locked you in this box with no creativity or originality or yeah. anything, and you're a mindless drone. Yeah, and then here comes Apple with this innovative new product that's mm. going to free you from all that. Yeah, I mean, look, they're you trying to sell me. you a computer, so yeah. it's all. You yeah, know, yeah. It's all overstated. They did great. They did a great job. They're yeah. doing pretty well. Yeah. You know? I'll give you one I understood. Where's the beef? <laughs> yeah. That was uh, Wendy's commercial. That They were mocking McDonald's and uh, Burger King for having small patties and big buns. It's my kind of burger. Yeah. I love it. And, uh, I mean, I remember this, again, so well. Cody McLeod, local DJ, wrote a song about it and... It was just a big thing. So th- it's just an old woman looking at a McDonald's burger? Yeah. And or, going, where's the beef? Yeah, because it's so small. The patty's so small. Where Wendy's had a bigger beef patty. Oh, mm. I thought it was about size. You know, all pickles are changing. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> While we're on the subject. <laughs> Wendy's, all the pickles are a little bit whiter now. Yeah? They're not gr- They're not that green. And, they, and they're... Uh, I see them in a commercial, and I just think it's like scallions. Where I go, like God, they're putting. I I I don't. I, I I go from pickles are my favorite thing to if they're this other color. Mm-hmm. I they're my least favorite thing. Mm-hmm. And so Wendy's switched. Uh, McDonald's, I want to say, might be close. If they start messing with their pickle, I'm gonna <laughs> lose it. Uh, and we'll then a special episode. I have to, have to uh, emergency Nate episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> McDonald's changes N9. pickle. I'll be honest. I think they did. Uh, yeah. I almost think they did change their pickle. On the on the, it's a lighter colored pickle. Look up and see if there's anything that, right. like it's it's instead of being like the green, the the darker. It was like a 
more green, like a greener green, versus a like it looks like a cucumber. Look at that. McDonald's made a sudden change to its most beloved ingredient. The beef, not the pickles. Yeah. The, yeah. Our pickle contains an artificial preservative. I mean, look, Lord knows what's going on in the in the kitchens of McDonald's. Yeah, like, I don't, like you know, cor- it's like, yeah, office. it's like, just give us the stuff, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a, you'd be, it'd be like a drug addict to going like, you don't got to do everything. You're like, Dude, I'm just about drugs from you. Just sell me the drugs. Yeah. Uh, I'm not here to a lesson. Right. Some uh, fast food changes in the 80s. The Chicken McNugget. Oh. One on the market in 81 at McDonald's. Those are pretty good. Worldwide by 83. It was pretty good. The Happy Meal. Contained a hamburger, cheeseburger, or small serving of Chicken McNuggets. And it, that they're one of the first ones that tied in with movies and stuff and promotes promotions. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. big. I was big into the Muppets back in the early eighties. <laughs> yeah. Some Muppet glasses in come the with Muppets me. toys and the yep. Happy Meal. Yep, Happy Meals are, are great. You still get them every now and then? I don't, but I'm have an eight year old, so we get them for her. Laura will eat them sometimes, but I yeah. mean, she just, Laura likes that yeah. size of meal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apple slices. I could order two of them. Yeah. You want uh, apple slices or extra fries? You're like, come on now. That's what I say to you. Uh, That's always, they always ask you, like, do you want apple slices? Yeah. And then you're, like, when you do it, but with a kid, you're like, yeah, give her apple. Like, she needs something. And then you're like, well, what if I don't want them? They go, we'll give you more fries. <laughs> you go, okay. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. They, they go, we try. And you're going to tell me your pickle's not, you got to change your pickle up? Have you seen the Cam Queens episode where he goes he goes out to a fast food place to get ice cream for him and his wife? And it's just him in the drive through line. He goes, I'll take two ice cream cones. She goes, anything else? And he goes, who am I kidding? I'll take a number two. And she goes, okay, anything else? And she goes, does number two come with curly fries? And they go, no. He goes, okay, I'll take a number three. So you want to cancel the two and add a three? And he goes, when did I say the word cancel? <laughs> get him, he just keeps getting stuff. Um, we'll talk about that on the 90s episode. No. New Coke. You remember when Coke changed its formula? No. Yeah, there was New Coke, and then they changed the formula, and people freaked out and got mad about it. So then they had to go back into the old way and call it Coca-Cola Classic. Oh, that's Which why way? it's called What's that now. What's the new now? way now? I mean, I think Coca-Cola Classic, which is the way we have now, is the way it's always been. But for a while, they tried New Coke. It was sweeter, and people didn't like it. Did they have Clear Pepsi? You remember that? Clear Pepsi? I remember, I remember when the they brought that back. Yeah. In the OOs. And it was it didn't go good because it was like, yeah, we, this is ridiculous. People use New Coke as a cautionary tale against tampering with a well-established and successful brand. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, hello, folks. <laughs> mm, here. Uh, all right. Oh, and there's the one thing I didn't know. McPizza. Do you remember this? McDonald's mm. pizza? For a while, there was a McPizza. And then they finally got rid of it because it wasn't coming out fast. It took 11 minutes to make. And it just didn't fit McDonald's brand. But there's still one restaurant in America, or in Orlando, Florida, and McDonald's, you can get a McPizza. Huh. I'd go to that one. Yeah, yeah. check that out. All right. I'll wrap up right. with uh, sports. All right. All right. Associated Press Male Athlete of the Decade. Can you name it? Wayne Gretzky. OJ. <laughs> you get OJ wrong every time. <laughs> just... Wayne Gretzky. He received, Boom. I mean, he dominated <clears throat> everyone. He was the NHL MVP nine times in the 80s. Someone mentioned that once, I think, on something. Maybe we talked about most dominant, and we didn't mention him. But he, uh, he's, he, you could argue he's, no one's, the stuff he's done, it's not even. He won MVP nine out of ten years in the 80s. Yeah. So most of it. Mario Lemieux won the, the other year. He received 307 votes for Athlete of the Decade. The second was Joe Montana, who had 85 votes. Oh. It's not even like what he's done in break records. Is It's it's so far. It's so many records. It's uh, People can't catch him. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not even – he's he's doubled them and stuff like that where you're – I mean, Ovechkin is like can possibly get him in uh, – but he, Ovechkin's got to be unreal yeah. and mm-hmm. play forever. Yeah. But he's the like right now the only one. I mean, what Gretzky to me feels like, you know, like Jordan is got everything. That's like that's where like Tiger's like that too. Like 
Tiger's got that. When you see all the the uh, the the stats and stuff like that, Tiger's always like. So there was, you know, they had yesterday. They had the uh, the golf when the eight playoffs holes eight, and uh, the last time that's happened, guess who was in it? Tiger, Tiger Woods. Woods. And like, so it's like that. It's like he's always just his name's there, and you don't mm-hmm. know, you don't realize how much this dude did. And uh, but Gretzky is, I mean, it's it's nuts what he's done. No one can catch. No one can catch these stuff. He's got more. You could take away stuff from him, and he still is the best. Yeah, it's just nuts. Uh, just other people who will receive votes: Magic Johnson, Carl Lewis, Nolan Ryan, Larry Bird, Bo Jackson, and Walter Payton. Forty hmm. ers Walter Payton. Yeah. Forty ers won four Super Bowls in the eighties. Wow. Uh, some of their memorable plays the eighties or moments. Miracle on Ice, nineteen eighty, mm-hmm. U.S. Great Russia. movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. You see that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. The Disney movie? No. About the it's gonna kind of remake something, man. <laughs> it's not a... <laughs> to remake of an event. <laughs> <laughs> Just remake it. Just remade. Just an actual event. event. <laughs> hey, you guys, come check out this new movie I got. It's uh, called Last Tuesday. It's what I did all Tuesday, and I want you to come follow us around. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of not a crazy day, but I think you guys will find it interesting. <laughs> That's what all the movies are going to eventually kind of just be. Just uh, Last Tuesday. What did uh, Harrison Ford do in July? I don't know, have you ever seen that movie, what he does every July? It's a movie about what he does every July. Oh, I'll go watch it. <laughs> We got the sequel August coming up, and it's pretty yeah. similar. It's pretty similar. He stayed, yeah. They were going to fly back, but they decided not to. <laughs> so. July 2. Yeah. The sequel. That's all the movies. That's all the new movies are now. <laughs> it's just that. Just recreating. Here's a movie. What's this movie? This movie's about, remember when y'all first went and watched Transformers? It's about y'all's journey to the movie <laughs> to go see Transformers. You go. All right, I guess it's kind of different, you <laughs> yeah. know. Do we get to see Transformers? Yeah, of course. The main it's yeah. going we're going to show Transformers the whole time because it's just you. It's just a camera behind you watching Transformers, <laughs> and and then we tell you it's cool. We use some fancy words. <laughs> we we just throw someone big name, you know. It's, uh, who directed it? You're like just whatever. Uh, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Like, All right, I'll watch it. Uh, some other of the top sports moments in the eighties: Doug Flutie's Hail Mary. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Boston Sta- College. Yeah, yep. Stafford Cal, the play, the bands on the field. Is mm-hmm. that the most crazy college football play? That is insane. I don't in know history. if there's a play that's top that. Yeah. It- uh, the ball goes through Buckner's legs. Game six, the eighty-six mm-hmm. World Series. Mm-hmm. I remember watching that. Yeah. And uh, Kurt Gibson's home run off Dennis Eckersley. That's what yeah. I remember. Yeah, that's my. First one I remember, just him pumping. What's the line from the announcer? Yeah. Uh, Do you believe in mirror? That's not no. It's, there's, well, there's uh, two. Yeah, that's a weird one because lines. I don't Hello, believe. Friends. I don't believe what I just saw. I think maybe that's it. And that's Joe Buck. That's the radio broadcast. Okay. But Vince Gully was doing the TV broadcast. Yeah. So it's weird because the radio one's the one that's most memorable, but most people are watching on television. Oh, okay. What's the radio one? I don't believe what I just saw. Oh, I don't believe. I don't I just, believe what I just saw. As yeah. he's yeah. as he's doing that around the base. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. As the uh, yeah, and everybody on the radio is like, "Well, we can't see." <laughs> and he goes, "God, get some TVs, you losers!" <laughs> I can't. There's no words yeah. to describe. It's so awesome. What I to saw. See this, dude. I saw it in real life. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And everybody goes, "What happened?" Does he even say who wins? We'll make a movie about it in 40 years. Like 10 of them. All right. What about each inning? I'll watch it. I guess I'll watch it. Who's going to play it? You know, whatever. Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, you know, one of the main ones. Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. It's not going to be the same people. And this last one, I actually don't remember this. Scott Hoke. 
It's a good one to be on then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one to end on. This last one, I, I kind of barely did the least amount of work for, but I'll worry on it. Uh, well, I worked on it. I the opposite of doing uh, uh, how you're supposed to close in comedy. Yeah. This last joke's the least confident I have. In it, so I'm going to get out on this one. Uh, I was going to get out on like the Challenger explosion or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, which I do remember. When was that? Challenger? In the 80s. I think it was 85. 80s. Yeah. So I was in first I was in first grade, but I don't think I don't know if I remember. Yep. Like I don't remember. Everybody always remembers they pulled them out of class or they were watching it. Mm. I we, I'm sure we something happened, but I don't. I was in 8th grade and we had a snow day, so we were already out of school. I remember someone listening to Guns N' Roses. They talked about that <laughs> in like first grade. Dirt, while the Challenger exploded? Yeah. They, <laughs> they put on like, Guns N' yeah. Roses. <laughs> the soundtrack, it was perfectly timed out. Welcome uh, to the jungle. <laughs> it was No, I remember being Welcome to the Jungle, and I remember something on a playground. Like I'm saying, that's what I remember for first grade, is like, or that, for some reason. Like, I wasn't allowed to listen knocking to Knocking on heaven. That's like when I was allowed to listen to everything. Def Leppard was all these things that aren't dirty anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But I remember we went to the dentist's office, and we're waiting, and I had headphones in. And then uh, the kid next to me has headphones in, and he's like, he goes, oh, you want to switch musics? I'm listening to, I think, Amy Grant, <laughs> and he's listening to Def Leppard. <laughs> and that's the experience. And I gave him, and I give him those headphones. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm just a me. Like, I don't think I'm allowed to listen yeah. to this. I told a lot of kids that. <laughs> I remember when Tipper Gore, when she was. Oh, God. You know, you remember? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, before, you're like. Uh, John McCain's dad came and spoke, <laughs> talk, talked to my uh, college. Uh, he was a year younger than me, and he had a kid early. Uh, <laughs> now, I remember Tipper Gore wanted to get explicit lyrics, like a label put oh, on yeah. for rap and stuff like that. That was a big yeah, deal. I remember that. Uh, no, this one I don't remember. <laughs> Scott Do Hoke? Remember? I think so. Yeah. Scott Hoke could have won the 1989 Masters, but he missed a two-foot putt. In the playoff, and he lost to Nick Faldo, and I watched it. He didn't even. I mean, he pushed it bad. Yeah, it was the worst choke job, I guess, in golf history. They said. Yeah, they're. Uh, I feel like this is you're trying to like if we were on a date, you're just trying to win me over. You're right. <laughs> and you go, and then yeah. the go, you go. I watched the uh, uh, the Mesters the other day. <laughs> the and, uh, <laughs> It was on the TV and uh, just, look at this pot. Just trying to go I mean. and he goes, he just barely misses it. Golly, uh, wow, that's tough. I made a five putt this weekend. Uh, Stakes were a little less high though. It was my Augusta. <laughs> it, was your, it was your. That's mis- what I told John Augustine. But then we were talking about it. at club championship for me. Every right before I hit every wall, I just would go. <sighs> This is my Augusta. <laughs> this is my Masters. And then the other, the group with me is like, mm, this guy's taking a little bit too serious. And I yank one right. <laughs> no worry, we're fine. That one, uh, we get digging through every. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's tough. I mean, you'd be at a, it was above the above the hole. Those are those are the toughest ones when they go down. It's crazy. Everybody thinks about it every day. I bet he does. I if he's still alive. Uh, <laughs> you know, just trying to be funny. Man. <laughs> you know, that's a good time, right? I get it. I bet Scott Hook's still alive. Uh, no, I bet he's doing great. Uh, yeah. All right, that's it. That's We're it. done, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had some good steam after. What was before this Scott Hook stuff? The Challenger. Challenger stuff. <laughs> we did pretty fun. <laughs> uh, and then, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next week.